Hamshachayim Beis, from the beginning, middle of chapter 137. We're rolling right along, right? That looks like half the book here. I have the Sefer. So, in the, middle of my, in the beginning of Maimah 35, Discourse 35, Baleshcha, page 266, is where we reached, right? Or 265, actually. Yeah. 265. Yeah. 265, beginning of chapter 137. So, where are we here? We're here in Yisrael, Saba, and Tfunah. Which is essentially code words for Yisrael Saba, which means the Yisrael, the grandfather, or Yisrael, the aged, or the sage. In contrast to Yisrael Zuta, which means the small Yisrael, the now Yisrael, the child, is Meichin. Yisrael Saba is Meichin. Intelligence. But it's the Midrash Sheba Meichin. Or more specifically, the Nehi. How one within wisdom and within Bina, within Chachma and Bina, Saba and Tfuna, Yisrael Saba and Tfuna's Bina, has the ability, the capacity to communicate and prepare the idea for others. It's like the handles, the heat, that allow it to uh, be presented to the next level, so to speak, to the student. And here we talk about the Yichud Saba and Tfuna, Yisrael Saba and Tfuna, it's called, in other words, Chachma Bina Abba Ve'ima or Chachma Bina Tatoin. So it's called the lower level of wisdom, how wisdom relates to Midas. But as we are interpreting, Midas doesn't mean here emotions, excitement of the, in the study. Midas means the inclinations. So called how wisdom and intelligence, Chachma Bina, lead to particular application. Application of Chesed would be Schus, application of Guru would be Ladin. Right, wrong, you merit, you don't merit, is the discretion that comes from an intellectual process. So fundamentally, it's an intellectual inclination, but it's a midrash of mechin. So you saw Sabin Fun is how the mechin relates to midrash, not as he called it mechin ba the etzem. What was the expression there? Shem atzmus hamechin. That's abi ve'ima ilayin. And this is related to the level of the avos, as we as we began. Interesting thing I found, I just want to throw in. If you remember the last thing we learned before the last mind, the last mind began to understand this, we need to understand the two types of Yehudim, right? The Yehud, the unification that maintains existence and sustains it. <coughs> and the Yehud that brings something new into it, which is Matan Torah. That in turn came, if you recall, from the chapter before, we was talking about the Ovis who bring the Iragvul, which is Shaddai, all the way to Adli Dai. You know, in other words, as maximum, maximum, uh, uh, you know, like maximum, what let's say, like, you know, a car can drive at, uh, let's say, maximum, can reach 170 miles an hour, even though we only drive at 70, 80, whatever, 90. Maximum performance. Maximum performance. The others were able to bring it to the maximum uh, before it would burst. So it's like, ugly die. But remember, right before that, he spoke about Avram Zokin. He said the Gemara said, "Actually, what was the expression? Ad Avram lo have a zikna." And the Pirush of the Ma'ar of Amagid, that's the Yud Gimel Tikkun Edikna. So, a few things I want to correct myself. I looked it up in the Gemara. I looked up the Magid. Zikna there does not mean age; it means beard. Kipshute. That's what the Gemara is saying. Until Avram, there was no beard. And there's two Mefarshim there. The Masha says, "What do you mean? We see Zokin." Before there's a pasuk zokin by uh, uh, where is it by Noyach there's an expression zokin as a beard so the masha teaches that there was no white beard and there's other mafash or maybe the opposite yeah there was no, there was no whiteness in the beard the beard did not get white and there's another teich which is the the yifetayar and the medrash he teaches there was no beard altogether so Avram posted the union of a beard started growing. And they bring a raya from Sarah because Sarah, a woman, doesn't have a beard. Anyway, I'm not going to go into the details, but basically it means Ad Avram, no, you have a zikna. We interpreted zikna as age. No, it's a kipshutet's beard. Obviously, so the Magit teaches what means there was no beard. What, I mean, what's, what's the meaning of that? Why, why not? So he said, because it was Takah Noam Shacha from Yud Gimel Tukun There was no revelation. A beard reflects a higher revelation. So what I, I looked it up because I was looking it up in the Maimorim. It's primarily a Maimor from the from the Tzemach Tzedek, 
on the Pasuk of Avram Zokin, and the Rebbe Marash, Tafresh Chav Zayin. And there, they actually, when they discuss the Kimmel de Gunadukin, the Cyrus, if you remember, it was about the Cyrus, the Sad is also a very Moshri Moshri. It's a very narrow flow, a very diminished flow, but it's connected to a high source. Remember, that was the two point. And, uh, uh, okay, yeah. So, in the continuation of those Maimorim, what do they speak about next? About Yisrael Saba and Yisrael Zuta. Saba. Saba Zokin. The white beard. So, even though he didn't say it specifically, but very clearly in those Maimorim, this discussion, Yisrael Saba, which, as we said, is the level of Avram, right? That's the level of the Yichud that makes that, that that's within the worlds. That's it Gimel Tekunedikna, even though it Gimel Tekunedikna is a higher Gili, but it's a Gili still within the structure of existence. So I just wanted to point out that this flow. I don't know if maybe at the end here he's going to say it, but even if he doesn't, it's not just, uh, it is related to the, this idea. And when you learn it, you sense that the Rebbe Rashab read that, because you could see how, it says, Abirayant, on this day and this, we have to go into the Yisrael Sab and Zutta, so on. Okay, Sol Saba, rather, and uh, and uh, Tfuna. That was one thing I wanted to say. The second thing was, as I said yesterday, I'm just repeating again. So bottom line is, everything we're learning here, how how um, um, the Meichen, intelligence, affects life, which is the Midas, and how each step is necessary. First you have Chachma, then you have within that Nehi, that's the Sol Saba, then you have the um, Bina, and you have the Nehi and Bina, which is Tfuna. And how that, in turn, will give birth to Midas, Yisrael Zuta, as we said, informed by higher intelligence, until all the way to Yaakov, is really, Yaakov is, of course, the Ovis, too. Remember, Yisrael Yaakov is, is the Bechir Shabbat, so this is Vaiter levels that the Ovis introduced. So all this is showing us the details of how the Ovis, the patriarchs, brought godliness into the world like a teacher that actually applies himself and brings it down to the level that the student can appreciate the higher intelligence so now we begin page chapter Kuflam Zayin another dimension in it he speaks in Eitz Chayin the Sol Sabbat Fun is the He of Shem Avaya and and the Ab of Imayloyin which is always going to the highest level which is the Yichud we're going to learn of Matan Tera that's the Yud of Shem of Shem Avaya. And he explains that in Atsilis itself, we have everything has everything in it. So Atsilis has Atsilis Shabbat Silas. That's the Yud. It also includes the Bina, the Vav Dalet. And then you have the other way around, how the He, which is Bria Shabbat Silas, includes the He, includes also a Yud. Because before writing a He, you begin with a Yud. So bottom line is the question is what is the primary force, the dominant one, the dominant gene, so to speak. So we began learning the difference between now Atzilus Shabbat Silas, Briyas Shabbat Silas. So what did we began learning? We learned that Atzilus, the key difference between Atzilus and Briya is Mechusa Metzius. Gili Mechus, Gili Metzius. As I explained, Mechus means where you relate directly, like Zeh. You can point to it, you can you experience it yourself. You experience the Mechus of something. Metzius means you're told about it. You know of it. Mitzis, like literally, what means Mitzis? I know there's the Mitzis of, uh, of of Atzilus. We all here you read you read the Chassidus. It says Atzilus. What do you know about it? I know what I'm told. That's all I know. Mahus would mean if you actually entered there for a moment, even and had experience, you could say I had a. I could tell you Mahu. That's Mahus. What it is. So we could talk about many things. There are many things you can talk about. Just the Mitzis. Obviously, if I talk now about let's say uh, uh, India, I was never in India. So I know the Mitzis of India, I don't know the Mohus. It's really not really a good example because it's just a matter of me going there. It's not like a Echus Dika difference. You go to India, it's going to be very different. It's still part of the planet. When you're talking Ruchnius, Mohus and Mitzis, you're talking about qualitative growth. So it's not just, you know, when I say Mitzis, it's like I say someone was in this room and then they leave the room. So I know the Mitzis of the person, even though I don't see the Mohus. That's an example. It's far more, obviously, more relevant if you understand it and also in a qualitative level. So in other words, it's a, it's a deeper dimension. It's not just, I know you exist and I haven't seen you. 
I'm just explaining that Mahus Mitzvah too. You can speak on the level that it's just a matter of. About in the past, let's say you know you know the Mitzvah is Bashem Tov. You never saw him, but you okay. that he was. Yeah, he but Bashem Tov already is also the Mahus. Even if you saw him, do you really know the Mahus? Instead, I don't want to use the Bashem Tov. I'm specifically using something like I've never gone to to, to let's say to uh, Rogers Avenue. And someone tells me there's a Rogers Avenue a few blocks down. Now I go. My point is that's also Mahus Mitzvah, but it's not. It, I want to, I'm making a distinction. That's just an example to say, okay, if I walk on it, I, I'm experiencing it. If I'm told about it, I, I'm told about it. I want to say that, well, let's say Rogers Avenue is a more spiritual street than Kingston Avenue, you know? Then it's, Mahus Mitzis takes on a deeper meaning. It's not just, you haven't been there. It's a, it's, it's a more qualitative. I'm just pointing out, Mahus Mitzis itself, you can just, I'm, I'm qualifying the example. That's all I'm doing. Not, nothing, uh, so here we're talking that Silas is not just another world that I just happen not to have been to. It happens to be a different quality level. So not knowing the Mahus really p- p- keeps you far limited uh, limited in your experience of it. It's not just, okay, just let me know. Okay, let, let's, let's go there now. That's my point. That's all I'm saying. That's why I didn't want to use Baal Shem Tov or the Rebbe. The Rebbe, okay, you saw the Rebbe. Someone else didn't see the Rebbe. If someone asked you, you'd say, you know, the truth is, my seeing the Rebbe, yours not seeing him, as far as his muhuz goes, were pretty much equal. Because my seeing didn't make me, you know, I, 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 obviously you can speak. Oh, experiencing yeah. the, 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 the fabrain, you know, experiencing the Okay, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. That, but that, in Indian, a person can learn the Rebbe's tale and also experience it and never have seen him better than people who just saw him and never experienced him. That's why I'm, uh, this is another word. I understand his wisdom, but not, not the alum. No, but the Muhus of a Rebbe. Muhus of a Rebbe is not as Mitzis. Even if you see him. My point is, even if you see the Rebbe, that doesn't suddenly mean you have the Muhus of him. That's... Yeah, but the, the feeling... There are people who went, went by the Rebbe. There, people, there, they were, there were people in the street that saw the Rebbe. They saw the Rebbe. Physically, they could bear witness there was a Rebbe. And they had no idea who he was. Anyway, the point here is not that it's not purely if you saw it or not. It's just a muscle to understand. Muhus means that you have a, a, a direct appreciation of the experience of it. And Matsyas means that you only know of it. And so on. So you, it could be even if you see. Two people can see the same thing. And one will, know, will have more of Muhus experience and one of Matsyas experience. So I'm just qualifying the example. It's not purely whether you see something or don't see. And I give the example. Of course, you see a beautiful piece of art. You tell someone else the art. This you have the muhus that has the mitzvahs. But to be honest, if a person is a real expert, you may tell him he may end up understanding, appreciating the art more than you did, even though you saw it. But that's just that's not relevant to this. I just want to not limit because I don't want this to become a problem later. We'll say one second. If I saw it, I have the muhus. It's an example of how you approach the muhus. But bottom line is, Atzilus, to go back, I'll just read this again from the beginning. You do it, Atzilus, of Chinz Gilea, Mahus, Dalakus, Vushemeir, Shamahus, Erakav. What does that mean? I'll explain in a moment. So, Meir, Shamahus, Erakav, I explained that. Because the Kav, which is the divine energy, that essentially, let's put it this way, Atzilus relates to the flow of electricity that's entering into it. That's from the Kav. The Zoh close after Hashem ben Atzilus lebiyah. That's the general difference between Atzilus and biyah. The be'el mis biyah b'riyat zirasiya p'chinas yidias amitzias levat. In the three worlds of b'riyat zirasiya, that's only a knowing of the mitzias. It's like us saying, "I know that there's electricity running into this building because I see the lights are on." Someone said, "You tell me what electricity is like." I say, "I have no clue." Atzilus knows and as it relates to the electricity itself. I'm just again as an example, the energy itself. The Atzilus meir gilam who's the lakus and musa kav, because Atzilus is meir, it radiates, illuminates muhusa lakus. So even though the focus here is on a lakus, but it's also the muhusa lakus, not the mitzis of lakus, and that's the muhusa kav. V'im hayes, v'im hayes. And even though the Kav itself, in general, is only a reflection of Atzmas Enesav. What radiates in Atzilus is only a reflection of the Kav. So it's true. Obviously, it's levels and all relative. But you have the Muhus of this reflection. Not the Mitzis of it. 
Like it says elsewhere about the comprehension of the souls of Gan Eden who benefit from the presence, from the reflection of the God, divine presence. That this is asoga, they actually comprehend the muhus personality of godliness. Where did we learn before about the Ganadin, the Nushamas and Ganadin? We learned it actually in a lower level. Remember just a few chapters ago? Nobody remembers? We just learned that the Bina of Attilas, that the uh, Nushamas are Masik from. Uh, Do you remember where it was? I just want to. I, it was, right, right, right. That's right. I'm just looking inside. Not even a few chapters. Right, it was just in the last few chapters. Yeah, the beginning by the Sharim, I think it was, right? Yeah, yeah. How Sharim particularly was different than Shamus and Sira, so different from Shachat Sharim Bina. Let me see, let me just see. Of course. Uh, uh, yeah, right here. Beginning of chapter Kuflam Advov. That basically every soul gets its particular thing. I'm just relating the two because because he's saying it here, so I'm just thinking. So it's muhus alakus, right? Actually, there it was Yisrael Saba. Not uh, Abba Vimilan. Hmm. And now he's talking about Silas Shabbat Silas. Okay, we'll see what he says. So they have Asogus Amahus. The Harimitsiyas Alakus, you do a Be'elim is Gamkin. In other words, when we say Nisham is going to Gan Eden and they have a special appreciation, what do you mean special? Knowing God, the Mitsiyas of God is known in the worlds as well. You don't need to have a neshama, be a neshama. There's an awareness of the divine in the higher worlds, b'ri yitzir Let's say malachim. So what does it mean? What's so special about that the nana, that they appreciate and they have enjoy and they have pleasure in the divine presence? By the the innovation, the, the contribution, or the, the what, what's accomplished in Gan Eden? So it answers a fundamental question. You know, we say neshamas are sitting in Gan Eden and enjoying. What do they have more than other creatures of those worlds, so to speak? Malachim, or uh, or just the presence, the awareness that exists there. The answer is because they have muhus alakus, like it says elsewhere. But this is neshamas and Gan Eden, which is, as we know, Gan Eden generally is bria, Gan Eden alien, and Yitzir is Gan Eden atachtan. Sometimes Gan Eden refers to Atzilus too. Is that the question? Yeah, that, uh... What do they have over the other creatures in those worlds? Mitzias, he says the Hari Mitzias Alkus you do be is Gamkin. Yeah, but maybe it means Mitzias Alkus maybe even in these worlds we know that they can understand that there's Mitzias. But Elamis, but Elamis, which Elamis? Elamis Loshon Rab means Bia. Yeah, 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 it could be here too. Fine, but 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 what does the Rebbeinu Shemus accomplish more? That's what I said. Exactly, as I just said. But I don't think it's about other creatures. He thinks about other creatures like like Malachim and the. Yeah, it means every everything. It means everything. Everything in the Elamis, whatever whatever is experienced. Yeah. So now he goes. So this is lower. We're speaking not silas as muhus. So even though the general revelation in Gan Eden is only a reflection from Matsilus. And in general a reflection is only a Matsyas. Which would mean that the aura of the Kav is also a Matsyas, but it's the Muhus of the Matsyas, as he said. So even though, yes, it's only a reflection, nevertheless, in Gan Eden, it's a comprehension of the thing itself. Before we continue, let me just, because I know you could just say this, so this I don't want to turn this again mathematical. Because what we have here is like this, the Kav itself, he says, is only Ha'ar and Atzilis. Now we're saying that Gan Eden is only Ha'ar of Atzilis, 
So we have ready. How many harvests do we have here? The kav, asilus is a reflection. In Biya, in Gan Eden is a reflection of that reflection, and it's all Mat Mohus. So he's not really explaining. It sounds like so. What is this? Like a play of words? So clearly, clearly, we have to go back to just uh, applying ourselves to to make it a little more uh, relevant. I always go back to that Sir Ruchnis example. We in general do not have a sagas. We don't have a, a mahus comprehension of divine. At best, it's a mitzvah thing. But there's levels. There's levels. If you were to say, how do you understand today the uh, lakus compared to how you understood a year ago before you start learning ayin beis? There's no question that there's a change. I don't know if you can quantify it, but you could, you could describe a change. What was what the fundamental change? So I would say in one word, it's edelkeit. You have a more refined view of an idea instead of like uh, just saying, oh, there's a table, there's a God. I understand that there's something more refined and you understand there's levels in it all. So it's really about nuances. No, we know, ask a child, there's a neighbor to yeah, there's a neighbor to God is everywhere. When you look at this, we're learning here, and I, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but if, you think, if someone asks you, so what did you learn all this? What, what is it ultimately? I'm not talking about the facts that you learned. I'm talking about the appreciation of the quality of what he's talking about, the worlds and so on. So one of the things is that we learn about more refined states and more and more refined, and it goes, it keeps going. As I said, can we measure exactly how you understood it yesterday and how today? Not necessarily, but <coughs> I'm just want to use an example from ourselves that if you really apply yourself to these ideas, there is a shift from Mitzis to a little more Mohus. And it's still not the Mohus. It's the Mohus of another level. So we talked when we remember we discussed the levels. All the way from Asir, Ruchnius, to Yitzira, to Bria, to Atzilas, Akudim, Ak, Kav, Esesphiris, Agnuzis, right? So at the end of the day, as I've been pointing out, it's not just uh, levels like, you know, floors in a building, and it's just a matter of getting up there by escalator or something, or by elevator. They're fundamentally different levels. When you have the ten spheres in one keli, in Akudim, it's like all the energy concentrated in a seed. So what do you understand? You look at the seed, you say, you know, the seed isn't just a small tree. It's qualitatively a different reality. It will become that. But you learn from that, you start learning what's called, like I said, Edelkeit. You learn that there's a refined state. We were all once a seed. And before we were a seed, we were a conceptual seed. So I don't know how many, again, how many levels you've figured out. But one thing is for sure, these levels are fundamentally different in their quality. They're not just, you know, like a bunch of switches you're going and you're just discovering what they are. They are switches, but their switches are qualitative differently. So if you were pushed or forced to say, tell me the difference between the edelkeit, the refinement of, let's say, akudim, and 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 and, and, and tikkun, atzilus, eris bekelim, or how the eris are before they enter kelim, you'd have to find examples. Another example is the keichas hanefesh. When my faculties are functioning right now, my arms and my ears and this, it's one way. And when I think how these faculties are in the soul, it forces you to say, okay, in the soul, they're far more amorphous. They're not shaped yet. This is all teaching us edelkeit. It's teaching us to be more refined, to think more refined, to think more, not in grub terms, which also helps us understand that when you see somebody, let's say, do something, you realize there's something behind it. It's a way of also being malamat schus on people, because you realize there's a story behind something. This doesn't justify a person's inappropriate behavior, but it helps you understand that there's roots and there's uh, symptoms. The symptom may look one way, the root is far more subtle. So it's about subtlety, right? Subtlety. So why am I saying this? Because I'm trying to find examples in our own lives that you could see levels where one, the one thing is a ha'ara of a ha'ara of a ha'ara, let's say a ganeidin is a ha'ara of atzilis, which is a ha'ara of the kav, and yet, you can only know that it exists, or you can actually say, I appreciate a bit of its quality. So, the truth is, in Aveda, you would really work this through and say, okay, where do I stand? But I'm just trying to give an example. It's not just a punching together. Ha'ara, okay. It's a, he asks the question, it's ha'ara. Okay, but it's the muhus of the ha'ara. Okay, let's move on. It's not just that. There's actually an appreciation of it that's different than you would have had before. You know, when, they, when, when those students, the Rebbe tells the story, like by Emer, I think, Tafshin Yud, one of the first Fabrengans. Um, so the Rebbe says that the group of students came in to see me, the Rebbe said, and they were taking notes, they asked questions, they were taking notes. The last question was, they asked me what a Rebbe is. So I described to them. 
And they were all jotting quickly notes, you know, they're writing it down. And as they walked out, the Rebbe said, of my room, I realized now they have a papir in the Rebbe. They have a paper Rebbe. What's the point? Someone says to you, what's a Rebbe? So, you know, it, it, the, the first instinct is you say, this, if you don't know what it is, you don't know what it is. And you'll start explaining what's a Rebbe. Is a Rebbe is a blue-eyed, charismatic uh, guy? A Rebbe is a Ruchni, is the command. You don't know what Ruchni is? Says, okay, let's talk about Ruchni. You know, I'm trying to say is two people can talk about the Rebbe and one can speak about it in a very relatively, you know, very human way. Another can speak and say, this is Elokus. Someone said, what's Elokus? But when I say it, you all know what I mean. Because you already, in your way, have come to establish that it's not just another guy, you know, or another thing. So, but, and, and someone said, okay, did you come to the... You'll say, no, this is how I appreciate it. Someone else will say, I can describe to you a Rebbe Elokus far deeper than that. And you yourself, in your life, will come to grow in appreciating what a Rebbe is, you know. I just heard a story that was just, I, 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 it was beautiful. I'll share it with you. I heard a Shabbos from uh, Zalman, the Shlom Zachi. I heard it from Binyam Garadetsky. It's very relevant. Because, you know, people talk about the Rebbe in, in ways that, I, that repulse me. And it's just a, a good way. Um, so it's a gate to Chov Shvat. Yeah. So... Unbelievable, my sister. We can bring about the story a long time. Yeah, uh, you heard that one? The chocolate. That's, yeah. Dachzich, she said. Dachzich, Misha. That I can relate to very much. Yeah. Yeah. So Reb Hill Parasha was a big, big chassid. He was a chassid. Now he was a chassid. They said he was like a half a rebbe. He himself wrote books. But by him, the passion was to come here. I remember from the Tzemach Tzedek was the biggest possible thing. It was more than your passion learning Iron Base. Can you imagine? Huh? Yeah. Is no, maybe Dr. Why, Lang is... Why is that an hour of... Right. <laughs> huh? After waiting a little while, they have to go out. Yeah? Huh? After waiting a little while, they have to go out. That's my son? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that... But, but it goes deeper than that. The Tzemach Tzedek, when the Rebbe Tzemach Mushka, his Rebbe, it's very uncanny. It was almost like the same story. So five years before... The Shemach Tzaddik passed away. It was the only one, only the Rebbe and the and, Rebbe and Shemach Tzaddik, same name, the Rebbe since passed away first. And everyone else, the Rebbe's went first and the Rebbe since went later. So, and also five years, you know. So, um, so she passed away. Once she passed away, it was a very dark time, so to speak. The Shemach Tzaddik stopped saying my marim, basically stopped coming out. And they, you know, they had different stories. It said, Melech Bley Matronisa. I think I told you this story, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, it took a while till Chassidim started telling them that Samuel Tzedek, there's a letter, the Rebbe brings it. I'm like, uh, that, that, that Taylor could be console you. You know? Because Aisha was a, he was a partner. It was like a king and a queen. A king is not a que- king without a queen, basically. Ruchnis. But after a while, I don't know exactly, he didn't say that, maybe a year. Samuel Tzedek said he's going to say a mimer, which was like, you know, a big simch, of course, a big thing. So everybody came. Rabbi Hill was already older, because he had passed away in Tafresh Chavdalat, so this must have been his last. And they all were waiting in Ganeid Natachten. Samuel Tzedek in his room. Nothing, an hour passes, two hours pass. Rabbi Hill was not well as well. He suffered from many things, so he had to go out. Couldn't stay any longer. As he was going out, he heard a few young light speaking in ways that disturbed him. They said, okay, that Samach Tzedek knew, the, you know, the passing of his wife affected him personally. So he went over to them and said the following words. He says, Shvenselach, Shvenselach, Shvenselach. You know what that is? You know what a Shvanz is? So Shvenselach is the, is the plural for Shvanz. Uh, when you say, you know, Shvenselach, they said it three times. I'm going to say it in Yiddish, then I'll translate it. What's meant it? As er the Rebbe is Egen Anoz Mitamoel as a Lakus. On Bishas the Da'a Helam of Alakus, the Da'a Helam of Rebbe. You got it? That was the story. To me, that's now I realize what bothers me when people talk like that. Like, you know, the Rebbe, the Rebbe passed away. Yeah, he went into this. this. He said that the Rebbe is a Lakus. And when there's a Helam and a Lakus, there's a Helam and the Rebbe. I mean, just the words just capture it in a very powerful way. I find it to be extremely... Um, he told me a few other stories, very good stories, excellent ones. This guy's got stories, unbelievable. 
He heard from Rabbi Shmuel, he's like a clam trap. Tell me, I'll tell you another one. He said that um, Rabbi Hill also, when he would go to Yechidus in Samach Sadek, he would go last because he would spend more time there. So the Yechidus, so everyone went to Yechidus. He also went, and people would wait, you know, till the Rebbe finished Yechidus. No one would leave. Even those that went would stay around. So Rabbi Hill went last, and uh, and he finished the Yechidus. He went outside, and uh, the Rebbe left, and Rabbi Hill remained standing there. They asked him, "What's why he's standing?" He says, "Because he has one more question he wants to ask the Rebbe." He said, "What is it? He wants to hear a mimer from the Rebbe." And uh, no, the Rebbe asked him. The Tzemach said that before he left, he said to him, "Why are you standing?" He says, "I want to hear a mimer from the Rebbe. I have one, one more question." The Tzemach Sadiq left. He remained standing. The said, "Why are you remaining?" He says, "I remain standing." Huh? Request. It wasn't a question. Yeah, but that's what he meant. He called it like a question. So. A half hour passes and someone said it comes back and says a mime. So he said, Rab Shmuel used to the story. He says, They say by Chsidim that a Rebbe never has a Kpeda. There's no such thing. No, the Rebbe never has a Kpeda means a, a, a grievance. It's Chsidim. When the Chsidim have a Kpeda on the Rebbe, that's when the Rebbe has a Kpeda on them. Because once you cut yourself off, if you have like a, a Shiloh or a question on the Rebbe, that causes the cut off. So he says that if you wait, if he would have left, the Rebbe would not have said a mimer. If you wait, you show that you're waiting with waiting for the Rebbe, the Rebbe comes back. That was the word. That's, no, it's only applies it's, today. Exactly, exactly. So in other words, we may not understand everything, but sometimes we have to realize, you can't say, where, where did the Rebbe go, and I, I, I don't understand him. It's not your business. Yeah. Your business is to, is to, to stay loyal. You can't say the commander in chief uh, abandoned you. The bird's nest thing. What do you think? Okay. You wait, you'll hear the man. It's on. That's what he called. Rabbi said. Huh? It says Mashiach goes to a bird's nest for a while. He comes up and leaves. He leaves the world. He goes and puts him in a bird's nest. I don't have any idea what that means. I was reading it the other day. Yeah. Anyway, the reason I was saying is going back to Edelkite. I'm trying to give some examples in our own lives. Of on the difference and muhus. So we all have, relatively speaking, we have a rebbe, a paper rebbe, and then we have a muhus rebbe. And it takes obviously a little aved and a little uh, discipline. And I, well, I say repulsed because I cannot stand. Look, I, we all have a nefesh like nefesh abamis. My nefesh abamis is very uh, well fed and uh, very active. I can rest assured. Okay, but I also have a nefesh like so you talk about a Rebbe with your Nefesh Abamis, and you try to, t- 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 you know, what are you talking about? Your Nefesh Abamis doesn't understand a Rebbe. If you're talking from your Nefesh Abamis, you know, there's certain things that a re- Rebbe is the real thing, and that's it. You know, small with small munkas. Either he's real, he's real, whether you understand it or not. I can't stand when people who oh, confessionally see them of the Rebbe, and they talk about the Rebbe like, like, uh, like he's uh, one of their uh, friends. Like, you know, trying to analyze him. Like, even the question people ask, why do you go to Freud? First of all, it makes no difference. What's the difference? So you understand everything. You know, just the, the mere thing. And suddenly, because you have a question, what it changes the Rebbe because of you. And, and, and so I remember those years when the Rebbe had the stroke and people were, were kochens. Why is the halacha? Why is there a halacha? That's why it bothers me. Why is there a halacha? You're not allowed to see a king take a haircut. Everyone knows he's taking a haircut. We knew when the Rebbe had a haircut. The, the, the barber would come, he'd go in the Rebbe's room and give him a haircut. Why is us, you're not allowed to see a Rebbe, uh, a Melech, take a haircut? It's a din. You're not allowed to see him in a mikveh. Why? You know that he's doing it, you know that he's a human being. Because there's something that affects us. Melech b'yofit t'chzene enecha. A Rebbe is, a, is the, the, the beauty of a Rebbe. And it affects a human being to lose a sense of uh, certain respect. You know, you make him humanize him. I'm not trying to dehumanize the Rebbe. The Rebbe is of Nefesh and Shama Beguf. But you have to understand, according to Chassidus, Alakus is Alakus. You know, Rebbe Hill's words were, you know, given. The Rebbe is Alakus. There's a hell of an him. If you see that the Rebbe is like so called withdrawn, it's not because he's depressed because he lost his wife. It's because losing his wife is a hell of an Alakus, and therefore there's a hell of an him. If you don't believe that, then what's the Rebbe for you? What do you mean? He's just a, a nice, smart man that you go for advice? This is how Chabad sees what a Rebbe is. So there's an there's Eish a Lekim involved here. And Moshe was this way and so on. I'm trying to say is that there's a Muchus of a Rebbe 
It's a Metzius of a Rebbe. Hmm? That's one of the reasons he separated because he was he went to a level where it was not possible to really maintain ah, both things. Yeah, it's, it's, it wasn't it wasn't so simple. Yet Meishu had a love affair, but was with God. That was the thing. The look of challenge for people who really have a relationship with God is how to come bring it back down to earth. They'd have to, and they do. But the, for them, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy at all because you're in a very divine spiritual place. Like the Rashbi. <laughs> yeah. You know, for us, it's not so complicated. <laughs> because, uh, well, anyway, my point, I just wanted to give some taste of little muhus. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't know if, how, how much you're into music and song, but there's an expression that a person that has a chush has a chush in the song. The word chush, not kisha. There are people, for example, who they sense a song even though they physically they don't have the tool to sing well. They couldn't sing. But they had a chush. Yeah. Why is that? Because you could have the same song sung by two people and one you feel they get it. You feel a depth to it, a personal depth. Another other person may sing it technically right, even better than the first, but there's something that's missing, something muhus missing. Again, I'm just giving examples. I want to just give examples how muhus and metzies can be understood on many different levels. So the key is to find a, a so-called a, a, a commonality, something that we relate to. Okay? Can you find an example? Let, let's take ice cream, okay? Some people eat ice cream, they know the mitzvahs, but they don't have the muhus. Others get an ice cream, they really appreciate the muhus. This is like in the category of the example for shefa from ketchup. So I'm actually saying it in a humorous way. I don't, for the record, anyone watching this was just a light moment. Don't get me wrong. But there is that type of thing. You could have in Tivus also. You know, there's some people, they know how to like eat the hot and cold of ice cream properly, and they appreciate uh, on, the, on the palate the different sensations that tantalize their uh, taste buds. And there are others, based on the up on ice cream, they don't really appreciate the, the, they don't pay the ruch in the society. You understand? Am I correct? There's no one got No, no, you appreciate slowly to how to eat it and properly. And as I said, the hot and cold, there's a, you know, they say when it comes to ice cream, there's three key things. There's the cold ice cream, if you have hot chocolate syrup, and whipped cream, which is like a neutral, because it's not hot or cold. So you have three. That's That's this is mahus. So you don't understand these things. You're, you're, uh, I know, uh, <laughs> like some people, you know, I see on, on bottles of wine, as you say, mashke, it says, with a, with a, a with a touch of, right. of fragrant uh, roses or something. Aroma, yeah. And some people feel it. And I drink, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> you know, they have this, this thing, they, 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 they send, they, say, they can tell, someone says, a little strawberry, a little uh, blackberry. I said, what? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> a hint of this, a touch of that. Yeah, yeah very well, tinge. Yeah. No, but, but the truth is, people with a palate, the, you could actually the relate to it. I understand, I understand it. I understand it conceptually. Coffee is like this. I, I, I love the idea of coffee. I don't drink coffee. But there are people who do. So I know the mitzvahs of coffee. Most of coffee, I don't know. I'm trying to give some examples of the order of the kav and atzilus using uh, mipsari mips, echzal from our flesh. Yes, oh yeah. the muhus, the muhus, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's like music theory as opposed to just playing the music. It's a muhus thing. Anyway, so bottom line is, this is not just a repeat of levels. That, that okay, because if you read it, someone says, look, so what did he just say? The shamas and ganeden of the muhus. We just said that's the mitzi. It's only a reflection of atzilus. And now you say muhus, and this is muhus. Everything is muhus mitzi. You're just throwing it out. Not correct. Every level has in it the mitzias of it, and then there's the muhus of it. And muhus is that having a that in the reflection there's the muhus. Of it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was just comparing. He said he has the same question. He said, "What do you mean muhus kav? Isn't that silas only the ha'ara of the kav?" So he says the muhus of the ha'ara. Then he says, in the, "Like the neshamas again, eight. Isn't that only a ha'ara of atzilus? Yeah. It's the muhus of the ha'ara." Right. So I just wanted to just say it's not just jumping and throwing uh, levels in. These are very distinct levels. He's just not explaining what is talking the difference between the muhus and ganeden and bria compared to the muhus and atzilus. 
But suffice it to say, that's why that's why I was using examples of the appreciation of the Edelkeit of Ruchnis, because that's what it comes down to. Like, what's the difference between how the faculties are in in the containers of your body, how they are concealed, but they're still faculties, and how they are in your etzema nefesh kolul, or how the nefesh is neisa keiches, like we spoke, the difference between akudim and ak. It's nice that the nefesh carries, contains the the, the, the... the answer is, it's all in Edelkeit. It's all in refined state. How the child is in the mother's womb is more refined than the child outside the mother's womb. And the seed is even more. In even more Edel state. And even before the seed would be an even deeper spiritual state. So just examples of of, of appreciating it's not just different states it's different mechus and so on but the bottom line is it's a mechus of the da'ad 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 yeah but you know what it's amazing that's the most you know, about what we've changed in, in this world by the way we don't even have a ha'ara of the kav no, that's the thing so we have like an aura we have what we have is like he says if in atzillus it goes through a window and then there's a a wormhole yeah. and then in in Bria it's through a curtain so in Asiya it's barely there Except you have once in a while, this is a dark world. Like he says, this is a dark world. No, no, or once in a while, you have a ray, uh, 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 something pierces through. You know, no, or it's, it's like another universe, another dimension. You know, I used to think of Chassidus as like a, a continuum of to the high, but it's, it's so different. It's like a completely different universe going from one level to another. You know, or it's like a a cholom, a cholom, a cholom, a cholom. It's it's unbelievable. That's the biggest thing I I, I, I can appreciate. That's his epiphany. Oh, good. Yeah. No. He's right. It's a dream of a dream of a dream. It's true. It's true. Um, a komal kamarazu he began edin b'chinas sasoga samahus. Or be emes and in truth, mashe batzilus shurak haaris akav. Now he's going back to batzilus. In truth, even though batzilus is only the reflection of the kav, hainu b'chinas achochme shireshu shtalshul shazob b'chinas chetzenis. Now he's going further. Before he said, okay, it's a reflection of the Kav, but the reflection, we have appreciation of the Mahus of it. Okay? So think of it this way. The sun is up in the heaven. The sun transmits rays to earth. These rays, we see them in daylight. We see their effect uh, if you get a sunburn. You see their effect, they make things grow. You see their effect in different ways. Okay, what do you know about the Ha'ar? Now I'm not talking about the sun, but the rays itself. So we know Matthias, we more or less know it exists. We can't really say we know this Muhus. Scientists have studied these rays. They've put it under uh, microscopes. They've studied the properties. You know, the sun rays are very complicated. They have in it ultraviolet, they have ultra, they have uh, an infrared. To the rays. Gamma. Not substance as you define substance. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And look, when you, it's uh, not just a reflection of the sun itself. One second. When you're lying on a beach and you get a suntan, is there substance or not? You get burned? Okay, sure. So, and, because, and, and it's not, the sun hasn't touched you, the rays have touched you. So the rays carry properties. They have properties. Huh. What do you mean substance? They're not substance like a table, but it's not, it's not, it's not invisible. It's energy. If there's no sun rays, there's no uh, there, there's clouds. The room, the, the 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 world would be dark. If clouds would completely cover the sun, you wouldn't see anything. So that's air. Air reveals. It just doesn't have substance of its own. That's what it says. In other words, take away the sun, the right light has nothing. Water. If I give you a cup of water, you have it, even though if I stop the flow. That's the difference. But this, of course, it has uh, particles in it. It has it has it has power in it. But they're always connected to the sun. For example, when you put on what are they called sun uh, sun uh, screen, sunscreen, what is it doing? Sunscreen blocks out ultraviolet, and I think infrared. A few a few of the key, the strong properties of the sun that can be destructive, that can be malignant, that can cause uh, cancer and so on. If the sun still strikes you. You can still get a tan because the sun is like a power, is like a fire. The point of the matter is that. If you study the sun rays, you say it's only Ha'ara. It's not the sun, but the Ha'ara also has a Mitzvah and a Muhus. That's the point I'm making. Mm. So now he's going, that, that's one thing. But now he's saying, in truth, that what we say, the reflection of the Kav is only. Uh, we say the other Kav is in Chachma. Remember, Chachma is Yisrael Saba. Minus of Chachma. It's only Chetzenius of Chachma. 
פסוקים. אבו ואמס, מה שבצירס הוא רק האורס הקו, היינו בכינס החוכמה. What does it mean that Aras Akav is an Atzilus? It means in the level of Chochmah. Shireish is Yishtalshus. Why? Because Chochmah is the beginning of the structure of existence. So it, can't have the, it doesn't have the Kav itself, it has a reflection. He says, It's the outer. Remember, Abba ve'imit taton and lilan. Remember that. Abba ba'atzmus ha'chochmah me'er atzmus ha'kav. But in the core of Chochmah, in Atzilus, there radiates actually the core of the Kav. So not just that we have Muhus of the not only do we have the personality of the reflection in Chetzenis Chachma, in the Kor Chachma, Atzmus Chachma, we have actually the Atzmus HaKav. Now we explain, it's the HaKav, Yimei Yesi B'dera Klala Ara Levad. Now again, so before we're talking about the Kav, a reflection of the Kav, but the Kav itself, even though the Kav itself is also Ara, Mekom Mokom Madreg Bamadregese, Madregose, HaAtzmi Yesh Be'etzim V'Ara. Okay, we need to explain this. Even though the kav itself, what is the kav? Let's not forget what the kav is. The kav means a line. So the word kav, kav achut, a line and a thread of light that's coming from before the tzimtzum, following the concealment, the total tzimtzum. So we have now the teacher, after he concealed everything, he's allowing a very narrow flow that transmits. So think of it like um, an IV tube. Just as an example. Or spoon feeding somebody. You can't let the flow just come. You have to narrow it. Or a faucet. You have pipes. The pipe constrains the flow so you can get it drop by drop by drop. If you if the faucet would break, it would flood. Raindrops. You follow? So what is the Kav Betzim? The Kav Betzim is a very is a reflection. Besides, it's a diminished flow. What I just said is diminished, actually, not reflection. But it's also a reflection, because the kav is not the beginning. The kav is, is a, a ray of light coming as a reflection from a source. So he's saying, but in truth, in general, the kav is ha'ara. But madrigose ha'atzmi, in its core level, if you really dissect the kav in its real personality, it also has an etzem ha'ara. So the Kav also has Etzim Ha'ara. So we have here many, many things now we've learned. There's an Etzim and there's a Ha'ara. In truth, everything in existence has both a core and a reflection. So one will say, who's you? Who are you? Who's the core you? And who, what, what does your reflection look like? How do you figure that out? <laughs> exactly. So you could say the core you is what you carry in your thoughts. Things you don't tell anybody. And what's reflection? What you share with others. The core you is what you feel inside. The order of you is the face you project, the masks you wear. You know, every one of us has masks, and almost automatic. Think about it. You meet somebody who you know, and right away you put on the right mask that fits that person. You meet someone else, you have a different mask. I don't mean necessarily a mask that's lying, or cons- but it's a mask. It means it's adjusting. You're adjusting to the different people in your life, right? It's a normal thing to do. You know, some people say that each of us has like a jar right in front of our door of our house with a bunch of masks, and then when you go out, you just take different masks and you put them on. We do this automatically almost. Depends where you're going. Huh? Depends where you're going. Yeah. So you could say, what's the core of you? What you are like without the mask? What do you like in your inner thoughts, your inner feelings? You learn a little chassidus, or even not, you think about yourself, you say, is that really the core me? My thoughts? My thoughts are also not the core me. That's also, it's just not revealed to others. But compared to the real me that I'm not even aware of, even my inner machshava, my feelings, even my inner thoughts and feelings are also somewhat of a reflection. I'm again trying to give examples. It's very important because I don't want this to become mathematical. There's just level, 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 and we memorize ha'ara, etza, etza, ha'ara, this is ha'ara. In reality, in life, this is a constant journey. What today can appear core, and something else, reflection, tomorrow the core can, it becomes a reflection compared to a deeper appreciation. And you can see this, you can see this. When you're, let's say, with a master teacher, or you're someone who really understands, an expert on something, and you already think you mastered it to some extent, you speak then to the real master, and you realize, <laughs> compared to others, they think I'm the, the mumch, you know, I'm, I'm a core. Compared to this person, I barely know the surface. 
It's a common experience. And nothing wrong. It's, a, it's true. Why? It's not because you don't know. Because it's all relative. It depends where you are. So you're climbing a mountain. So the people on the ground say, what do you see? I say, what I see, I see, uh, I see a horizon. Someone says, that, wow, that's a brilliant. I, 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 will I get there? Yeah, climb up. You'll see it also. Then someone's a little higher up. And you ask the guy in the middle, says, what do you see? He says, I see. I see a thousand miles. I see the ocean. Wow. What, it's all relative. Each one is seeing a, a bigger reality, and they're all true. It depends where you're standing. So, so, there's, so it's just impo- it's important to know, therefore, that you could talk about things that are a reflection for one person is something core for another, and for a higher person, that core is only a reflection. Follow. The beauty, th- the, the interesting thing is, especially psychologically, when you're talking to people, and I've seen this many times, you know. There's a symptom. Like, you know, let's say you have a, a pain in your finger or something's not working in your, your life. That's a symptom that you can identify. Everybody can see it. Or you see it at least. You describe it to someone who is a little more experienced and says, maybe uh, the cause is this. Try something. And let's say you discover that it's true, that's the cause. And you think you've solved it. Loved Africa. Because you go to someone who's even better expert, they'll say maybe there's a cause to the cause. So you found the first level, that is so-called core issue, so it's better than just the external symptom. But then there's a core, core issue, and then you can go back all the way, who knows how many levels. The point is, in other words, so although the Kav is generally a Ha'ada, in its level itself there's an Etzim in it, and there's a Ha'ada. And not be concerned when we say, depends where we're talking, or it's relative. Relative is not just a cute answer that everything is relative. It's not true. Because there are levels that you could quantify and say, this is a level. Does it mean that you reach the, de- the depth of it and there isn't more to go? Obviously, you can go deeper. You know, I'm always fascinated by the studies of nature where they dig under the earth. You know, they, they say the center of the earth is molten rock. is unbelievable heat of, of thousands of degrees of, of temperature. Like this, like a sun. That's <laughs> Now, and you wonder how such heat under our feet, deep down, and then there's all the layers of rock, etc., etc., etc. And then you see a volcano, or you see an earthquake, and suddenly, you know, a little exposure of what's going on. Where's all that heat? Can you know what a volcano kind of heat it, it spews? It's unbelievable. The heat, and it's all inside there. And you start realizing, this, the earth that we walk on, how many layers does it have? I mean, it's, it's, it's always an insight. It's tremendous to see. And even that, nobody, nobody's gone there. Nobody knows exactly what's going on in the center of our own earth all our experience because nobody's traveled there you can't even travel there sometimes you see these fascinations of the, the pictures they take of the seabed you know the seabed has not yet been mapped out completely there are places in the sea that nobody's ever seen or gone to that are the sea is, is far more complicated than earth there are places that are just so deep Three and, and, much. yeah right so deep and so on what it teaches you is like the awesomeness even of something that's so close to us we're not talking about billions of miles away we're talking about right here, the same earth. And then take the human psyche. Here's a human being, five, six feet tall, weighs 100 pounds, 200 pounds. We won't go higher than that. You know, even though I do have a theory, I don't know if you know this theory I have, that God, when, they, when a couple get married, he gives them 300 pounds and says, split it as you see fit. And then after 20 years of marriage, he gives them another 100 pounds. It more or less works out. Try it out. <laughs> it's nothing to do with iron base it's my own little observation <laughs> so how this? so if it's 300 pounds if it's 150, 150 is nishta zay good 200, 100 or 180, 120 nishta right? <laughs> but ilu but based on what we state in Tanya ilu ula yara mamayla if you really push it. <laughs> yeah, but that's all dedicated to one. To the one person in the cup over there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> he's Amani Heshmei Rabba, I think. I mean, you know, the Nacham Chernobler. That fat from Amani Heshmei Rabba. The guy says, listen, I said, I mean, how much am I He says, I've been cutting down, it's not helping. 
I cut it out completely. It's still not helping. I said, because, yeah, but it's not, maybe that's not the reason. That's not going to show for a while. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so, so, so. Part of the person is the same thing like so, so, this five foot, six foot frame of a human being, tell me how complex it is. It's a human being, literally. I mean, how, how deep do we? We're not talking about millions of miles. But this little person inside this head, look at the, the trillions of dollars people spend on therapy, on healing, and trying to figure out what's going on inside this little body. I find that unbelievable to me. With all our exploration of outer space and water and everywhere, we know a lot. This little human being, we still haven't figured out. We can't even figure out the brain size. How big is the brain? The size of a little more than a palm. The brain. Interesting, huh? Complicit dimension. Complicit, complicated human beings. Yeah. So if anybody tells you they know the muhus, what do we know about the brain? We know the mitzvahs of a brain. We know little, uh, even the biggest researchers will tell you we know 5%, not even. Who knows what's going on in this brain? What do you think? You got the brain Can figured you figure out? figure out little kids, like you said. How yeah. You, out the you know what, uh, what, what, what like um, Ruven Dunin said to the guy they was fabringing in, in Israel. So the guy said... Uh, you guys with your God, what's God? How do you know? It's no God. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. So Reuven was a real farmer. So he said, you work on a farm in Hebrew? He said, yeah, yeah, you work on a farm. You know, tell me why? By goats. Certain goats, when they, uh, the waist looks like this, looks like long of this. Other people, it's like circles. And another's waist is this. So the guy said, I don't know. He says, Bechara, you don't understand. Bechara, tell them even at time of Tabel al Kim. You don't even know the core Muhusov of Chara. Forget about the. Anyway, right? There's no such thing as totally knowing the Muhus, but there's definitely. Let's put it this way: I know people who only know the Mitzvahs, and some people know a little more. I don't think it's about measuring. It's a. Me- it's, it's really like we spoke about. It's not about um, getting an award of how much muhus you know. It's about an aveda of recognizing how little you know, which opens you up to really know more. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Okay. But the point is that the 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 kav is harder and yesh be etzem vada uba atzmu sachoch mamir etzem akav. And the core of Chochmah radiates the core of the Kav. So the, the Eidzeis. So now we've established the second thing. So the two things so far. That in Atzilis you have the Mahus, Mahus of the Kav. Ah, it's only a reflection. So reflection is the Mahus of the reflection. But that's out the outer Chochmah. In inner Chochmah you have actually the core of the Kav. The Eidzeis, a third thing. An additional, not of Eidzeis. Moreover. Is the Kav made of a- Different ores as it comes down. I mean, it, it, we it learned earlier that the kav is made of nakudis, is made of points. But not a ores of ores of ores as comes down. No, you could say as the kav comes down, there's levels where the kav stops, and then there's reflections of the kav, reflection of reflection. Yeah, of course. Whenever you have energy, there's always. That is a change. It's not yeah, yeah, yeah. For is not an additional point. kav gufa primis. The kav itself has an outer and an inner. So he's adding another element to the kav. These are things that actually he's filling in little gaps of the switches that we didn't learn before about the kav. So it's a very fundamental piece here. So the kav, besides the fact, we, we just established, what did we establish? That the kav has an etzem and her order. And atzmis ha you have the etzem of the kav. Now he's saying another thing. The kav has an outer and an inner, not etzem and ha'ara. Chetzenius and primis is not etzem and ha'ara. I'll explain in a minute what that means. When we say the kav is only a reflection, that's only the outer dimension of the kav. But the primis, the inner dimension of the kav, is really the inner and the core of Eirein Sof. Okay. I mean, the simplest way to explain this would be he, 
He may, but let me let me say a few words about this. And uh, remember, the kav is rooted. Not it's not, it's not it's not a creation of its own. It came from somewhere. It came from the air itself. If not simtum, it's air. Except it's if like he asked before from Eitz Chaim, why did God? If it's an air that comes from air itself before the simtum, why didn't God just leave a kav? Make a, a tzimtzum, and instead of a complete black hole, just leave enough of a kaf to flow through. So he said you can't do that because the kalim would never have emerged. But fundamentally, the kav is, a, is light. It's not container. It's infected by the tzimtzum. It's affected by, and then flows through the rishima and it ends up shaping the containers. But the kav is still fundamentally light. Chazer v'hoyer is the word. It returned to radiate. Where did Chazer from where? So when a teacher, for example, falls silent in order to prepare to share an idea, and that silence, the Kav is not silence. The Kav is a stream of consciousness where he begins to speak. It's a narrow stream, but it's not coming from concealment, it's coming from revelation. He's just revealing it in a very narrow way. A, B, C, Aleph, Beis, Gimel, Dalit. Did you say it comes through the Rishima? The Rishima, I'm not talking about the Rishima. It's not relevant here, the Rishima. It's not at all relevant here. The Kav is light. That's the bottom line. It's a transmission of ideas of the teacher. So it's coming from his mind, from his light. Silence is silence. The Kav is not silent. The Kav expresses. But it expresses in a narrow flow. So when you think about this... Kav, think about it. the teacher is communicating an idea. Is this a reflection or is it a core thing? So he's saying that the Kav itself has a primis and chutzenis. The chutzenis of the Kav is what's speaking to the student that the student should be able to hear it. The examples, the step by step growth, A, B, C, you know, a sentence after a sentence, paragraph after a paragraph, he formulates the idea structured. But, there's, but it's coming from the same teacher. So the teacher in the Kav lies more than just what the student is hearing. There's a whole dimension of it that reflects the, the, the premius of what's going inside the mind of the teacher. And that's the premius. That's the inner dimension of the, of the idea. That's premius of Chetzein Yisakav. But he said before that there's a core, Etzim V'ha'odah, I would say that's not about the general cop. That's saying that the 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 uh, how shall we put it? Um, that the cop in general is a reflection of an idea, but it also has in it a core element. He's not talking about the whole entire cop that has a primis of consenius. Or you could say actually that it is similar to etzim and Ara. It seems to me it's a little different, but definitely Primus and Chetzenius is talking about the whole Kav having two dimensions to it. The more I think about it, maybe it is the same thing as Madrig also asked me, it's about Etzim Vahara. Etzim Akav and Aura of the Kav. So Etzim Akav is the flow and the reflection, yeah. I think Etzim Akav, you could also say that Etzim Akav is what he's actually saying to the t- student. So they're getting a certain core element of it. And the other would be a reflection of the idea. Not sure about it. But regardless, Primis and Chutzeni Yisakav is what he's talking about now. And the Primis, Primis Asmus. Now he's going to say, Dehine b'mokamachem mavur. Because now elsewhere he explains, Da'am shokha zakav al derech le'elim yishna, yishana odem le'talmide b'derech tzara. That the transmission of the kav, of the line of light, is an example that always a person should teach his student b'derech tzara. Briefly, in 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 short, in short expression, but in a summarized form, no, it's not elaborate that overwhelms the student. But that's what the kav is about. Hashpa, a transmission of ideas that comes but summarized, does not mean. This is not the intention that he's hiding. Concealing the idea, the concept from the student. And he only reveals to him only a drop. That's not what it means. No, is not quantity. It's quality. 
It's not that, you know, Derek Chari means, you know what, I'm only going to tell you 1% of the idea. He's going to say, Derek Chari means he takes the whole idea in a summarized form. It's a big difference. It's like if I would say to you right now, you know what, let's have a class and we'll learn now for an hour. And that's the beginning. But then tomorrow we'll learn another hour, another hour. So the hour is a Derek Chari, no. Derek Chari means that the whole thing is there concentrated. That's what he's going to say. Kim, rather, Akavanu Shemashpile, Kolaskola. He transmits to him the entire concept. Gam Eimekupnimia Shabaskola. Also, the depth and the, in, in, in the inner dimension of the intelligence. Lak Shemashpile, but Derek Chari, Befer Shiyochel, Kabul. But the only thing is, he transmits it to him in a summarized way, instead of elaborating for hours about it. He knows how to sum it up in a way that he can receive it. And in, within it, it concealed, it has all the depth and the inner elements of this intelligence. So Derek Sada doesn't mean just speak five minutes, and not the whole story. Say, no, the whole, it says, tell the whole story in five minutes. It's a big difference. So this is not about quantity, just limiting the amount of time, or limiting what you're going to say, it's a, it's it's far actually far harder. As Churchill once wrote somebody a long letter to his friend, and at the end he says, "I apologize. I didn't have time to write a shorter letter." To write short, short as long as they say, is far harder than to write long because it means that you understand it so well you can sum it up. I remember um, 15 years ago, I showed somebody some plans for the Meaningful Life Center the organization I run. And it was like, you know, 40 pages as a, why not, short, long, shorter than Hanukkah. So 40 pages, so the guy says to me, uh, until you don't get it to one page, not that I'm lazy to read it, but it means that you don't really have it. And I was very insulted. And I said to him, uh, well, maybe, you know, because there's so many details, and blah, blah, blah. But he was right, 100%. I even knew it then, but I didn't know the Mahus. I know the Matthias. So I said, so how long do you think it will take me? He says, around 10 years to get it from 40 pages to one page. And, and I said, 10 years? This is a lifetime. I have no time for 10 years. You're crazy. I thought you were going to say a few months, a few weeks. It's 10 years. Well, it took around 12 years. That someone was the money guy? Or a, a guy before I got to the money guy. You know, like, yeah. A money guy for sure wouldn't even, even tell me this. Uh, he would say goodbye. You know, I have no time for 40 pages. And I realized it's absolutely true. As a writer, I could tell you, absolutely. If you can't write it in one sentence, not that a sentence is enough for an essay, so what do you have to write more? Like I said, it's called Derech Tzara, but it takes a lot of wisdom to get it to Derech Tzara. Then, obviously, there's room for elaboration, etc., etc. But if you don't really get it, you can't sum it up in very short ways. The hardest thing is to write a title, a title of something. You know, give me this, you know, what is the name of it? Give me a description that, you know, I mean, people's companies pay billions, millions and billions of dollars to be able to get a, lo- a logo, a tagline, you know, that to capture, the, in short. You know, mission statements. Google's mission statements. Look how simple it is. But everything they do is under this mission. To organize all the information of the world and make it accessible. Universally accessible. Simple mission. It's unique. No one else does it. And it's their mission. You know, I studied mission statements because I saw mission statements do this. They they capture in one line the mission of an of a whole entity. It's it's pretty fascinating. It's you really need to very zoom in. Like Havdel, the biggest the, the the shortest mission statement in existence is from the Torah. Two words. No one has a shorter mission statement. V'shachanti b'seicham captures the whole purpose of existence. For us in the Migdash, v'shachanti b'seicham. Can I? Two words. Now, of course, someone will say, oh, so all I need to know is those two words, then you know the whole Teda? Well, it's like, Mada Olach Sani, Lechavarecha Lechavit is the whole Teda. Now go, obviously, it's a summary. But Shachanti B'Seh, God wants to rest among us. It includes Dira B'Tachtein, it includes everything. Or look at the mission of Chassidus. Yafutsu, Menesecha Chutza, three words. It never changed. No Rebbe ever changed that. Yafutsu, distribution of the product called Menesecha to the marketplace called Chutza. I mean, this, what I'm saying now, took the 12 years to figure out how to say it in three words. Now I appreciate, you appreciate these things. Because, you know, I know it sounds simple. Mashiach said to the Bosham, you foot some chutzah. But think about it. If you didn't know that, how would you say it? And you start thinking, should I say it this way, that way? Three words. 
It captures everything. Two words. It's unbelievable. It's like Yisro, 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 so that, so, so is not, I'm giving you a little taste of something and then there's a lot more. No, that's the whole thing in two words. Now, you want to talk about it, obviously, how do you, how do you make Shechanti B'Seichem? How do you do it? Like the Tanya. One but eich that you need a whole time. But the pasuk is one to make it relevant. That's not the chayka meivel yam shemayim. So how many pages you got to? I got it on one page. I could do it now in the paragraph. Yeah, yeah. I didn't work. You can't make that your goal. It becomes it's so after you work it out so many times, you start seeing that you get the gist of it, and you can put it what they call an executive summary or a mission statement. And trust me, it was murder. Murder. <laughs> and probably if I show it to an expert, it's still not uh, it's not it's not to say. It's like Abba to to film it, like to be like we were learning it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chachma. You see, Chachma, we learned about we learned this earlier. Chachma is the Nikudah before you develop it. But then there comes the Kudas Hatamsis. Remember we learned at the end of Bina, you summarize it. What we're talking here is the Nikudas Hatamsis. Chachma is not the thing. Chachma is a spark of idea. I want to change the world. I have an idea, you know. This is the time. This is like the nakuda that comes after you know the whole thing. You're able to summarize in a in a sentence in a line. Like for me, I am Bayes is clear. Every time I learn more and more, it's clear. It's a book of interfaces. It's as simple as that. But interface is a complicated word. It switches. This is clear. I am Bayes is interface. Mamutsa everywhere you turn. Every line I see it. I mean, not mamish every line you see, but you could see it's all about mamutza. He keeps going back to it. The mamutza, the mamutza, the interface. Chochma, bina, keser, this, atzilus. How you connect. But to summarize that, you know, to say the whole Kabbalah and Chassidus comes to teach us Ardus. How do you connect separate things? You need to know a lot of Chassidus to say that. You can't just make a statement like that. Mm. But since it's all over, it's more from one universe to another universe. <laughs> one dimension okay. to another dimension. Wow. So let's go ahead. So, Batal Vitalik Sara. So, Sara doesn't mean short and then not long. Sara means as concentrated, the whole thing is there. And that's why after 40 years, it's a great lie. It's a proof. He comes and understands, appreciates, a person rises and comes to. Or arrives to the true das, the true meaning, like Rashi says in Pashkis of the Emek Primi Sakavana or Musig, of what the teacher taught. What's the Raya? Who said? The teacher maybe didn't teach you everything. Who says after 40 years you're going to come to his depth? Maybe he gave you only uh, a certain amount of information. No, because he gave, he gave you everything. It's all there. You don't need to return to him because it's planted in what you, you learned. But 40 years, this is the depth and the primis, the inner meaning of the kavanah. So, a good teacher, it's implanted in there, all the stuff, it's just in a, in a presented in the ksara. This is what's explained what the kav is like. So it's a beautiful way of understanding the kav. That's what the kav is doing as it transmits. It has the whole story. Remember, we talked about mispar, sipur, sapir. So it has the whole story, but it's in short. It's in a kav. It's in a narrow kav. And right now you're only receiving what you receive. This is explaining the primis and chatsenis of the kav. Okay. Why is this? Because in the transmission that he transmitted, it has in it concealed everything, the whole inner core ideas. This is all an example. What's an example for? Vadugmim is that the example for this is Yuvan... And Vadugma Mizan, the example from this, you will understand Bam Shaka Sakav in the transmission of the narrow flow of, la, of, air, of, of energy called the Kav. That in its inner dimension it has within it the inner and the core of Ein Sof Baruch. The Kashem Shani Kudas Arashimu Harilavad Mas. Now he goes like this. Now I know we know there's also a Rashimu now. What's a Rashimu? Rashimu is the impression. Of the letters, which is more the structure of existence, it has an impression, a dark impression that remains after the tzimtzum. So you're going to say now like this. You're going to compare the two. The kashem shem nekudas hadeshimu, just like we speak about the point of the reshimu, that impression. Had a levad mashin kol ha'er. 
Besides that, it encompasses all the Eish Yenimshel Mekol Seishtalshlus. It encompasses in it all the revelation and that will transmit in the general cosmic order. How Yeshbo Behelam Kol Atzmos Ha'ed She'ena Be'era Cheishtalshlus Klal. It has within it concealed all the core energy that's not even commensurate to the to the Cheishtalshlus to the cosmic order. Kamosh Kosm Makamacha. Kamoy Kain Hu Ba'Kav. Similarly, the Kav. That in its inner dimension, it has in it the atmos, the core of Ainsaf. Okay, let me explain this. One more line, then I'll explain it. And the core dimension of Chochmah, radi- that's where it illuminates or radiates the inner and core dim- dimension of the Kav. Yeah, I think this... So what's the Oidzois? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Oidzois is not really... He's elaborating more. It sounded like a third thing, but it's, but he said... So we said like this. So number one, Atzillus, the Muhus... Even of the reflection of the kav, it has the mahus of it. Fine. Then he says, the atzmis chachma, primis chachma has the etzim of the kav. And then he explained that the kav itself. See, I'm, I'm confused why he said va'edzeis. He should have said bira inyan. He should have said bira inyan. Fourth line. As if this is an additional thing, but basically that's why I would, That's why, yeah, because yeah, I think it's an additional thing, not so much in the beard of the kav, because without va'edzeis, you also have an answer, because atz misachoch mez etzem kav. The va'edzeis is really an explanation that the whole kav has a whole panimius in it. I think it's a little like that. It should. It seemed like it should say beard einyan or einyan who. But I think because because he's in, the Ajay is more like that because in other words one point is that the etzim achoch because look you could have primis a katein and 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 and, and where does it reflect in, in Atzilus you could just say the kav has the primis he's adding that also chochma is a keli to that that primis a kav that's the first point that it's a keli then he goes into the primis a of the kav let me just add now what he said about the reshima which I think is an extremely critical point it's in the interface structure. This may answer some questions, and I know you have some confusion around this, right? Yep. Okay. Remember, we talk about two parallel tracks. Generally, the two parallel tracks is that there's the Eir Ein Sof an expression of the divine. Obviously, Atmos is higher than all revelation, but if he expresses himself, it's an Ablikvul, Eir Ablikvul, which is really a reflection of everything God wants to express. Period. Like Rotson. Doesn't have shape and form. We're not talking about the living room, the dining room, Chachma Bina. We're talking expressing God's desire, expressing godliness. Fine. Then there's another kav that Chassidus talks about, which is the kav that creates structure. Generally speaking, not in Hamshachayim Beis, you could say these two parallel tracks is the root of the eris and the root of the containers. The containers is the way God creates Gvul. So he creates containers. And the Eir HaBli Gvul is the way God transmits energy. Like Neshama and Guf type of thing. Nothing else. But the Kamu Kabbalim, there's, a, there's two opinions about the Eir. And the Ayin Beis leans toward, not leans, he says the whole Hemshah goes according to, and adds a third dimension which makes things more complicated, but makes the interface far more integrated. That even the energy, there's two parallel tracks. There's Eir HaBlikvul, Eir HaGvul, in addition to what I just said was the path that would create Oseus and containers. So you follow? And he made that very, very clear in the beginning of the Ayin Beis where he said clearly that the Eir HaGvul and the Kayach HaGvul are not the same. On lower levels, one will be Kav and one will be Rishimu. On higher levels, it's the Eir HaGvul in the ten hidden spheres. Not just that the ten hidden spheres are a root of the kalim, like the Pada says, but the ten hidden spheres are also the root of the energies. And then there's the so-called potential beginnings of the containers of the ten hidden spheres, 
we'll call that the oasis or the root of the oasis. When once the tzimtzum comes into play, those that third track, root of the kalim becomes the reshimo. The second track, which is Eir HaGvul, will manifest in the Kav. And the Eir HaBligvul remains the Makivdik energy that we've been talking about all the time, the transcendent energy. This is the Chilish of Ayin Beis, that third, that Eir also has, which obviously makes the interface far richer, because now you have in Eir a place where they meet, as opposed to other Shittas, where Eir always remains unshaped, like colorless water in colored tinted glass. You got what I just said? So now what happens is like this. So God wants structure. That's the the will of God called Kayach HaGvul. Structure means letters. Aleph Beis. Because that's what defines structure. This will become Yehi Eir, Yehi Rakia at a later stage. He wants that already. The artist is envisioning not just the paint and the, the vision of a structured piece of art. That's the Eir HaGvul. But obviously also the physical art. The question is how these two interact. So before the Tzimtzum, there's no interactions altogether because everything is consumed and subsumed in Eir HaBligvul. And it just fills all of Metzius and it's just completely overwhelmed like, 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 uh, like all the objects under the sea. The Tzimtzum now withdraws all the energy. What's left? So what's left is the Asis that God envisioned. And now comes the Kav, and the Kav enters. Think of the Kav now as the projector of light. And the Eshi Sarashima is the film. The light enters the film, you start getting shaped. What is the Kav from? From the Eir Ensof. Eir Hagvul. Everything was more. Right, exactly. And then they send it out again from the Sila. The Eir Hagvul is like a projector of light. Well, it's infinite light that overwhelms everything. You can't see anything except white light. In it, there's the root of the containers, the letters. In it, there's the will to have the fine light, ten hidden spheres. But it's all consumed, right. all subsumed, all overwhelmed. The symptom allows, creates space, takes away the light, conceals the light. So now the letters are there, but you can't see them. But they now are able to have some impact. Then he sends in a little light. A little light. Because without light there's no creation. Then it's just a dead black hole. That has potential seeds, but you don't have anything growing. The little light comes in, so now you have a projector of a narrow stream of light. This is coming from the infinite light from before the Tzimtzum. More specifically from the Esosphere Sagmuzis. Kav comes from, the root of the Kav is in the Er Hagvul. In the Schidr Shavayim Beis that I said. That shit that Er also has finite Er. It now enters into into this uh, invisible letters that are there, the, their impression of the letters, and the, and then it starts the beginning of the process of creation. It will take time. First, it will be ten energies in one container. First, it will be ak, only energy. The cap comes from Eretz Yisrael or from Eretz Yisrael before. We, remember, in Eretz Yisrael, the infinite possibilities of the artist, he envisioned one. They both contain in the, in but the root of the kav we say is from Eir HaGvul that's what he said the truth is the root of the Primi Sakav is from Eir HaBligvul the root of the Chitzen Sakav is from Eir HaGvul remember it's also Der Chitzara yeah but, but the Chiddush really is that, that the kav is not coming from Eir HaBligvul it's coming from Eir HaGvul that's what you want because you want Eir to have personality or else if Eir, kav comes from Eir HaBligvul yeah the root is Mamal that's the two shittas does the kav come from Sevev from Eir Abligvul, or from Eir Agvul. And, and here he's saying Eir Agvul. There's two opinions. There's two, there's two opinions in the Ramayim of the Alter Rebbe. In Samach Vav he says, in most places the Alter Rebbe said came from the Eir Abligvul. In Hemshech Ayin Beis he's going according to the Shit that's Eir Agvul. Kalim give it, allow it to really take shape. It's like the idea is fit into the letters, but without the letters they're not going to be able to read a page. Eir itself is pretty cool, but it's mine. It seems like from this explanation, what do you need the Rishimus for? Because you have the Eir Agvul. No, no, the Eir Agvul would be like an idea without letters. Letters, what are we going to do with it? No, it won't be expressed. Dark wool doesn't come. It'll be like it'll be a narrow uh, projector of light, but you know, you need the tangible letters. On a page, you need there's an idea here, and there's the letters that carry the idea. They they work together. Okay. It's like the letters that we use when we speak. If I just was communicating here without words, what would you understand? 
that's the first instance of duality in the world. The symptom creates the first instance because the symptom conceals reality. The real reality, the overwhelming reality of divine presence, omnipresence, is concealed through the symptom. Anyway, but the point, of, why am I, I elaborated not just to give clarity about the Shimon Kav, let's go back now here. <laughs> so when you talk now in existence, when we look at existence right now, let's put it this way. When you take a table, and instead of it just you being used for selfish purposes, but you make it a Mizbeach, not Ziv Chemesim, but a Mizbeach, where you talk Divrei Teda, or you eat a Shabbos meal, or you make a Baruch on it, you're making the containers of this world, containers all the way to the Shadish of the container, Shadish HaKelim, to the Shimo. They're containers for what? For the divine energy that's within them. Remember we talked about garbled letters, disorganized letters. If I speak now, and I start talking to Loshon Hara, God forbid, or just Shtusim, so my letters, my containers, are not aligned with the energy that they should be aligned with. If you start speaking Divrei Teira, your words, your, your actual containers are aligned with the Eir HaGvul of the Kav, which in turn, as we learn, also carries, remember we said Misper, Spira, Sipur, and Sapir? It tells the story also of the Eir HaGvul. Okay, if you hear this? So we have containers, we have the energy that fits in the containers, then we have the energy that's beyond the containers. That's the key, key thing here. What he's doing here now, he's saying, we just said that the Kav, even while it's communicating to us, let's say a beginner student has within it all the panimias, but it's all in the nakuda. She's saying an example for this is like this. Just like the Rishima is also this way. Remember the letters that God left, if you look at them, you don't understand what they are. If you were able to see the Rishima, if you were able to enter the world of Rishima, not that it's possible, let's just hypothetically say you're able to get a spaceship and land into the area which is at Simpson Marish and there's no Kav yet, which is right now, there's a state like that. What would you see? You'd see barren, you'd see like, you know what you'd see? You'd see like a desert with letters all over the place. An Aleph here, a Gimel there, a Dalit. Not Mamish, but I'm just, giving, I'm just creating a little uh, science fiction here, okay? Ram, you, you relate? You see letters, and someone say, what do these letters mean? I have no idea. Because there's no one speaking. No one's taking It's just olive base. It's a bunch of scattered aces. I have the codes, you know, that, uh, so, okay, one second. And, and, and now, a minute later, suddenly light shines in. Ah, it's taking the letters, and now I see. It would be like looking at a negative. And what is the negative? I can't see. I mean, I can, obviously, today we can see a negative. But imagine a negative that you really can't discern. So and suddenly shines a light. Ah, now I see. It's an image of this. Yehi Eir, Yehi Rakia, Desha. He this, he Adam, etc. But the letters themselves, you don't have any idea. But the one who put the letters there, they carry in it all the configurations and combinations that these letters are going to teach. When you're teaching a child olive base, they're getting the Rishima. That's all they're getting. You know, you're olive, right? Olive comments, olive fall comments, baseball. What do, you, what do they know from it? It's just letters. But in the letters he says, I'm going now to the Shema. It includes everything because everything is going to come alive through those letters. It also has in it also Those letters also have in them the part of the artist that is before he envisioned these particular letters. So also So remember like this, so when you see you come into a room, an artist's room, and you see, not art, you see paint, you see a paintbrush, let's forget about the paintbrush, paint, and all kinds of different elements, uh, a canvas, you know that this paint is going to turn into something, but you can't see it, but it includes all the possibilities, plus, Atmos Ha'er, then same thing he says within the Kud of the Kav, which is the energy that enters in here, is also like that, the Kav has in it, in the Kud so the Kav, which is the energy that will flow into this structure of letters, also has within it not just a minimal flow, but also all the depth of the story. So really, what we have in this world, basically, the Hest is a very, very important point. Not only does, well, usually you say the other way around, but not only does Oyr contain all possibilities, but also the Kalim. 
When you look at a table, at a chair, at a plant, at an animal, at an apple, at the sky, at a, sem- at, at a cloth, it, is, it contains in it all the possibilities that God wants to achieve with it, except it's concealed. The same thing is the oyer. The thing you do, something that reveals, also contains all of the reality. So really what you have here is Ardus Hashem everywhere. Everywhere you look, whether it's a container or it's an air, has in it everything, the depth in it. Obviously in a container it's very concealed. In the air it's more revealed. Yeah, that's it's the part that he's saying. Not yeah. be revealed unless the, uh, the revealed. Now of course if there's no interaction between Kav and Rishimu, well, no, then you start having, basically then the, pain, the paintbrush is taking the paint and with the idea, the concept of the artist, with the mind of the artist, is, is creating a piece of a piece of art. Well, it's going to take time till it becomes Eris and Kalim and Atzilus. Fine, that's what he said here. Okay. What's the difference in two Gashanos? One he says by the Rishima it says Or she'enav erech l'shtalshus, and by the Kav he says Yeshua Atzilus ein deinzer. Not sure. It could be similar. It could be similar. I'd have to go back to the early chapters to see when he explains Kavar Nishima earlier if he makes a distinction. So I mean, the Kalim really reveal the Dira B'tachtenim element more. So they go all the way into the Kavana of Atmos. The Eir will reveal the, 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 also the Kavana. I don't know if there's a distinction. I'm not sure if there's a distinction at this point. It's, at least definitely not spelling it out. As I said, we have to look earlier I mean, they're sure they, they both are revealing all the way to the source what God wants. But I think the Kalim reveal more the Etzem. And the Eir reveals more the Kavana of the Etzem. You know, the intention behind it. The Kalim just reveal that God wants Tachtenim. So that's like, uh, you know. But I, but I don't know if he's going to Atzmas here. Because when he says She'en I think he's talking that both of them reveal the Bligvul. That's what it sounds like to me. Or at least Atzmas in Sof. So now in Atzilus, in the core of Chachme lies the core of the Kav, which is the Tzara of the concept as it is in its original mind of the teacher. So in other words, even though the Kav, let's say when you learn Chumash, and you learn God created the world in six days, He did this, day one, day two, day three. That's the Kav speaking. The Kav is telling you how he created it. But is there a deeper story? Absolutely. Because it's only Derech Tzara. When you're learning in a Chumash, you're learning a short summary of the creation. Within it lies depth the depth of the reasons behind these six, and what did God want, and the deeper levels that are beyond what you're hearing now as a student. That's what he's trying to say here. And Atzmis HaChoch, Menatzilus, radiates that element. So there's a bigger picture here. He's not saying Er HaBligvul, interestingly. He's saying Atmus Ensof, but I think he means the Er HaBligvul, because he's talking here now definitely Abba V'Imei Law, he's talking to Yud. Because remember, all this was to come to explain Atzilus Sheba Atzilus, right? Not Briya Sheba Atzilus, that Atzilus Sheba Atzilus is the Mohus. So all this is Abba V'Imei Law, meaning not Tata, not Yisrael Sabbat Fona, which is the Hey, but the Yud. This is all the Yud in Atzilus. So he really seems to be that he wants to bring the Er Chadash. That's the Er Chadash of Matan Terah. Let's see where he's going with this. But that's that, and just to keep the flow here, that's where he's going here with this. So now the Ovis were able to connect to the Derech Tzara. So they were able to connect to the Kav. And which reveals more. But they did not have necessarily, the Etzem was not revealed until Matan Terah. Well, the Kav, right? And the Etzem, the no, no, here, here both. There's Chochme, Abba Vime Tatoin, Abba Vime Eloin. We're talking here Eloin. Atzmi Sachochme would be Eloin. That's what we said before. Atzmi Samechim. But then when he says, there's a Chetzeni Sachav and the Primi Sachav, could be he's trying to differentiate, and that's what maybe the Eidzei says. Well, that's that's Abba Vime Tatoin gets Chetzeni Sachav, and Abba Vime Eloin gets the Primi Sachav, yeah. And this is what it says on the Tera. That when you will say, the Tera, the, the tera is, uh, relates to what's called the primal, primordial metaphor. 
Moshe Kadmeni, like the first and of all Moshalim, all examples. The Raisa Mechach Menafkes. Hazem Pchim Mechinus Moshe, the answer of Kadmeni Shlem. Raisa comes from Chachma. Torah originates from wisdom. What is that? It's a Moshe, the answer of Kadmeni Shlem, that means Moshe Kadmeni. Not that the Moshe is the first Moshe, it's a Moshe on the Kadmen. So Torah, which comes from the God's wisdom, is an example on Ein Sof Kadmei meaning the first cause. Kadmei would be the one that precedes the world. V'yaduah, the Moshele, Inyan HaParsa. As we know, and we learned this earlier, a Moshele is the Inyan of the Parsa. A Parsa is a curtain. K'mashkos, B'Tereh Da, Pasach like in the Maimur, Tereh and Vayera. Pasach which he's cited earlier quite a number of times, Umavur Shaman explains there, Shiyesh, Yisun Bam Shachus, Bam Shachus, Shadei Parsa, the Gabi Bam Shachus, Shadei Tzimtsu. He explains that there's an advantage of a transmission that comes through the curtain over a transmission that comes through the conce- through concealment. Dean had Tzimtsu, Musila Ke'er, Vehedore. Vehedore, Vehedore. Hedre. The union of a tzimtzum is removal of the energy of the light, the hedre, and it's uh, and, and the lack of it. Huh? It's absence, right? The absence of it. So tzimtzum means concealment. A curtain is not a airtight enclosure. It's a curtain. So Mahusa, the essence of the core of the energy is mislabish manifest from Masalim and concealed by Pas in the curtain. Like the Mahusa Animshal, the essence, the core of the of the metaphor, of the moral, is literally manifest and dresses up and clothed in the example. A symptom is not an example. A symptom is silence. When a teacher is this experiencing when you experience symptom, especially talking about symptom Arishan here, is to utter silence. It's a preparation for a flow. But what you're experiencing is darkness, stillness. The parsa is a curtain. A curtain means that there's a flow. It's a flow that's diminished, it's veiled, it's, it's shrouded. It's a muscle. So it's an example. So the flow is coming through an example, but the example is mamish, the nimshal, dressed up. See, here goes interface again. The Taylor, therefore, which is called Moshla Kadmeni, a Moshla for Kadmeni, So if we said, like for example, we said, less Machshav at Tvisa Beklal, so we, God's Machshav is beyond us. But no, Taylor Machach Menafkas. Taylor comes from God's wisdom. And it's coming like a Moshla. So it means it's a revelation. Yes, it's a revelation that's Bederach that's, Tzara, that's, that's, that's concentrated. An example, but it's a revelation nevertheless. So I'm saying, as soon as you say Tehid is Moshla Kadmeni, and we're saying Kadmeni is a Moshla for godliness, means wisdom has in it the container for the divine. Because if it was Simpson, it wouldn't be able to come through, it wouldn't flow through. Only like through a curtain. Like he said before, meaning that it has within it the mahus va'atzmus ha'er. Not just a reflection. Except, it's concealed there. Like, and will come out in time. Will be Yesu Yuvan, and this is, Yesu this is increasingly understood. Listen to this now. Even more understood. Here we go back. To the sheet to explain how many times has he said on Shittim of Vurkan. So clearly the Rebbe Rashab wants us to know that he's talking. And this is even more understood according to the sheet of the opinion that we explain here in this Hemshech. The Gam B'Shayr Shakav, Kamesha Be'er and Sof Shittim Shittim, Yesha Mesa Sfira, Shayna Sa Sfira, Sekhnuz Be'er and Sof. Answering your question. Exactly what we just said. That also on the root of the Kav, the way it is in the Innocent of the Infinite Simpson, my love lines like this because it's a reality check that we're on the right track. You know, sometimes you read, you say, oh boy, I don't know where we went. But he's, at least he's creating a, a reference point. That even the root of the Kav, where is it? Is in the Innocent of the Infinite Yes, Shemesh spheres. Even in the root, it has ten spheres. Er Hagvul. And those are the ten hidden spheres in Eden Sof. So all that we just said is far more understood because if you said that Eir, that the Kav was rooted in Eir HaBligvul, then how could you say it's a Moshul? Then it's Simpson. Then how could you say it's a Moshul for an Imshul? It's concealment. 
The fact that it's rooted in energy of, of, of energy that's all the way in the root, that's meridik, huh? that's unbelievable. And is, uh, is so mashal nimshal is parsa, not simtsum. And is rooted in the beginning. But, but the interesting twist is the kalim are through simtsum. The kalim do not are not like parsa. Because they're not because the kalim, when you look at them, you're not going to see anything. The air is going to reveal the air gvul of ain safe. The kalim is complete darkness. But it's like the <laughs> No, and the Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if so, just like in Chachmah Tzilis rests the infinite divine light, the, the, the core of the Kav, uh, that's beautiful. Same thing you have to say, that the Chachmah of the ten hidden spheres radiates the Primus Ein Sof, the Blik Vul, the inner dimension of Ein Sof that's higher than the ten hidden spheres. Wow. wow, that is very powerful. The first time he says this, so literally, I, I mean, I always sensed it, but now he actually says it. So, in other words, wow. So that's where the bligvul meets gvul. That's where the infinite possibilities of the art meets the finite possibilities. So chokma has the etzim and primius. <laughs> That's the real ma. <laughs> wow. Okay, very good. This is a key line, my friends. This is a key line. Key key chapter here. Because this has a big big connecting here. This is a big interface element. I wish he told us which chapter warns us a bit that this chapter is gonna like, you know a key a key a key switch. It's a key switch, key key switch here. But make sure remember this. Without the switch, we 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 we're gonna hit the. You know, like those mazes, you go the wrong way, you hit a wall. You need this uh, way in. How does the figure express this chapter? What's the front? Yeah, we're not even. Trust me, we're just beginning. How does he explain this? No, no, he's, it's usually the taken of the beginning of the chat. He says here, Hasoga Berichit Mina Etzem. The comprehension is distant from the core. That's not what he's saying right here. Anyway. Uh-huh. So now talking about Abvi Miloy, and wow, this is getting. Mm, it's tying it all together. I like this. It's very good. This chapter is, le- is is showing the connection to it all. He's not just went off on Yisrael Saba and Tfuna here. It is going back to the theme. Okay, one second, one second here. So now comes the question, so what's the role of the tzimtzum? Since it's like a parsa, an example, what does the tzimtzum do in the kav? So you could answer immediately, the tzimtzum is the kalim, not the er. So he's going to say now, and the union of the Simpson we explained earlier, chapter 22, that's an only to create distinct individual spheres. That spheres should become, should be transmitted as a distinct and unique and an isolated sphere. But he, that is, look at the Lushan here. But that is the same Chachman, that ten hidden spheres. It's rooted in God's mind, in God's energy of ten hidden spheres. Just over there is more. So what does the Tzimtzum do? The Tzimtzum just is there to, cre- to allow it to become distinct. So in essence, it's really a Parsa. It's really a muscle that's manifesting. But the Tzimtzum causes that you should actually have distinct entities. That's one thing. As we learned earlier, chapter 23, the example we learned that, remember the letters when they're separate and they come together. From the word Baruch, when we separate Baruch, oh, this is refreshing us from there. Now, when you separate the base alone, it's the same letter in the word Baruch. But now you see it as a distinct letter. And for us, there's no way you can teach someone Baruch if you don't first teach them Allah Beis, Beis, Reish, Vav, Chof, right? So Mamata from above, it's all energy that becomes Aseus, then becomes the Gvul, Kecha, Gvul, Beis, and so on. But from the bottom up, you have to begin a letter by, by itself. The Imi Yeshri, Yeshbazem, Miyuta, Er, Kameshni, Zbarsham. 
even though in the base is very diminished energy, what do you see in a base? Like we learned earlier, nevertheless, it's the same chachma, it's the same level, it's the same base. It's just very diminished. So if, that's the, if so, the inner dimension, the core dimension of Chochmah, the ten hidden spheres, Nimshech, Aide Primis Akav, transmits through the inner dimension of the Kav, not the outer, but Pchinis Atzmis Akochmah, the Atzilis, into the core Chochmah of Atzilis. Okay, what time do we have? Hmm? Everyone understands where we're at? So this is the shit. If the other shit, that the A goes all the way to the Eir HaBligvul, so this would not be understood quite the same way. You, how would you explain Moshe Lakadmeni? How could you say Teira Chachman Afkas? It's a, it, it doesn't have a root. There's no a root for the Chachma of Eir. Er, er There's only a root for the Keli, but not for the Eir, for the wisdom. But since the root of the Esosphirus and Shit is, is in the of the Kav is rooted in the Eir of Esosphirus, so therefore the Chachma of very nice. In other words, according to the other sheet, the Tater would not be able to lead us into Eirein Sof through our wisdom. You'd have to do it through Kabbalah Sel, through Nasa, not through Nishma. Mm-hmm. That's the shit. Now he's qualifying, this is all only in Chachma. So what do we have now? What does Chachma Vatsilis give us? So the Chachmah Chachma Vatsilis gives us the Mahus of the Reflection. Atzmis Chachma Vatsilas gives us the Primis and Atzmis of Chachma of the Ten Hidden Spheres, which itself gives us the Atzmis and Primis of Eirein Sof that's higher than the Ten, than the ten Hidden Spheres. There's like a symptom like every place, even though there's an aura, it, has, it sort of exi- exists on every level, the same thing. I don't know which way you look at it. I don't know what you mean, but... but just like you said, the, 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 it's really... It's Really no, I wouldn't call that. Parsa is more of a gilead. When, when the teacher stops for a second. Symptom is total concealment. Parsa is revelation. Right. That is right. manifest. But symptom means concealment. In this case, he explained what is the symptom's role, therefore, in the spheres, the eris of spheres. We know the role that it allows the containers. It allows them to become distinct. Allows them to become distinct. You see, the Moshal and Nimshal is that the same moral is now explained through the example. That's a parsa. So Chachma of Atzilus is like the base of Boruch. It is connected to Chachma of the ten hidden spheres. But what allowed it to become a distinct base? That's the thing. Without the Tzimtzum, it couldn't have become a distinct base. Once it is, it's a Moshal for that which is higher. So there's two things going on when you look at a word. It's a Moshal, that's really Gilead Helam. The tzimtzum is really allows it to be a distinct entity. That's what he said here. Now he qualifies all this and says, "Remember, we still have to go back to what this is." Abba v'imayilon. The calls there, b'chokhma dafka liyasha chokhma b'chinesriya, and all this is specifically chokhma because now we have the challenge the other way in the interface. Suddenly, you tell me that chokhma leads us all the way to the deepest levels. So one second. So we're just saying finite becomes infinite. We're just suddenly saying a structure becomes beyond structure. So he says, no, it's in Chachma. It's not like suddenly all of existence goes into Lifni Simpson. You understand what I'm saying? It's Chachma because Chachma is a keli for it because Chachma is a diya. Chachma is subtle. Chachma sees. That's why it's a keli, a container, and can transmit these highest levels. It's a true interface. But Bina doesn't have that. Bina already is comprehending. Comprehending is going to block that ability to be a transparent channel. So Chochmah Zidiyeh. It's B'chinsi. V'gam ba'askol da Chochmah ikr hu'a nocha sikhlis. And even the Seichel of Chochmah, not just Ri in a sense that you get a sense of the truth of it, even the comprehension of Chochmah, the main thing is not so much understanding, but ha'nocha sikhlis, It resonates. As we learned, Commission is Baraleel, Pedic Membez, as we learned in chapter 42. He's really bringing the chapters together here again. Aval Babina, Shibchinis Asoge, Babina, which is a comprehension. Narikol Asoge, Hubarichuk Mina Etzen. As soon as you say, I comprehend it, means I'm not it. 
as we learned. You're comprehending it. It's distant from the core. Remember, we learned that in Chochem it's Meir B'derech Kiruv, and Bebina B'derech Richuk, and in Zah B'derech Halein, a window. Going back to that. In Bina it's Richuk, it's already distant. The core is not radiating. What do you have? Only Ha'ara, only reflection. Now remember, even Chochem, we said, the lower Chochem has only reflection. Right. But here it's even more reflection of the whole thing. Like we learned before in Eitz Chaim, that in Bina, Eitz Chaim radiates from a distance. That's why we say that the main cosmic order begins from Bina, not from Chachma. Dafka. Because it's only a reflection of the core. And this is why Bina is called Elikim Chaim. The Masha Eden, so of Nikri B'Shem Chayes, Hari Kfar Hu B'Chinu Sirid, the Masha Madrega, B'Chinu Satz Musa. Elikim Chaim means the living God. We say Elu Ve'Elu, Divri Elikim Chaim. It's Elikim, which is already shows you that it's a, some type of concealment. But Chaim, because life itself, the life force, shows you it's already a descent from the core. Shari Batz Musa, Eina Shaykh Leim B'Shum Chayek Chachayim. When you say the core of something, you can't say, it's not shy, it's not possible to say that it's the li- it's, it sustains life, that it's the giver, the giver of life. So life itself is telling you that it's already so-called an outer expression, that it also gives off life. It's like giving off energy. It's not the core. The gamma not only the nivra, but even that it gives life and sustains the netzal. We're talking about atzillas, the emanations because really Bina is not, not talking about giving life to Bia so Bia you could say you know it's an external element that's giving life to creatures we're talking Bina Elikim Chaim Bina is giving life is Mechai the emanations of what of Zah and Malchus that are the lower levels of Atzillus so the Chayda what are we saying that it's a lower level nevertheless nevertheless Nevertheless, you have to say that even as it's Gamashir Netzlimimeta, it's also a descent from the core. In other words, you don't say Chochma is Mechaya, you say Bina is, because it's already up and applying itself to giving life to lower levels. Like we learned before about Midas. Midas is already outside of the core's intelligence because it's already applying it to some way. Okay, that's not referring to that. That's the source. Ultimately, Chochma also gives life, but. The mother is the one that nurtures, so to speak. The Eden Sof Atzme moved al be'erach meishtalshus because Eden Sof. See now he's going back to the other side of the interface. Look how how much interface. First he said how it's connected. Now he's going the other way around and saying it's only connected through Chachma. Bina is is already why because Eden Sof Atzme moved al be'erach meishtalshus because if you didn't go with this second half here you'd say you know what hey we're we're now buddies with God. We go all the way to Chochmah versus Sviyas Agnuzis. That connects us to Atzmus and Primius. Chavr Lap, here we are. And, and, it's not true. Then there's, another, there's only one God, my friend. Then the, you say that. And then now he's saying, Eidens of Atzmus moved to Berach Mishtashlus. Eidens of itself is separate. Look, here he's going out to the Isay of Sachedai Pone. That you have to not look. Now he's talking about the not looking. The part that we relate to, he said, the marshal. But now we have to also understand that there's an element of distance. Yeah. So that, you see it literally. Aaron says, "As we move, he says, 'Richuk merech nusach.' For lo yitake sham inyan the loshen chayeshu mechaye. So even when you say God is giving me sustenance, that doesn't mean you're His partner. He's beyond you. He bets him beyond you. And you can't say there lo yitake the thing of loshen the inyan or the loshen chayeshu mechaye. It's giving life." Beyond that, vim ken habina shenikra lekim chaim has it akal levad. So habina, which is called the living God, is a lekim as he's giving life and sustenance. That's only a reflection. Now we conclude this v'zeo di yisrael sabah v'tfuna him bina bechlal nikra bina bechlal. They go back to the beginning of the chapter. Remember, he said yisrael sabah v'tfuna, which is really the lower chokma and, and and bina of atzilas. He said is really the hay. It's really all bina. Bina is the primary force. Even yisrael sabah. That he said earlier was Chachma, the Midas of Chachma. Bechlolis, compared to the higher level, it's a hey, not a yud. In general, compared to the lower levels, it's a yud. Right. 
But compared to the higher levels, it's a hey. It's a bina. Yeah. <laughs> In other places, my morim, he says Saba comes actually from Atik. Because Saba is usually the level of Atik. But he says that's only Atik compared to the lower levels. Okay. Yeah. But now he's going to. The Hin in his bar, Leah Pedicul Famate, because we learned before in chapter 135, the Yisrael between Ebchinis Midis the Chub. We learn that there are emotions, there are the inclinations of Chachma Bina. And we learned and discussed that the Midas in general are what? A revelation and an extension. And it's spreading out, it's pastus, uh, expression, extension. Same thing as the, the, the inclinations in Chachma Bina, who in Yin Hatiyev Am Shacha, Shein Zebchinis Asmus the Chachma Bina. We learned there that it's only the Hatiyav Am What did we say? The Midas. It's how they're already getting to the Shah. Remember the gate that's outside, that's at the edge of the Chatzah, of the courtyard. That is, so it's already Shein's Abchinis Atzmas the Chachma Bina. It's not the core of Chachma Bina. Or Bafrad Abchinis Nihi the Chachma Bina, not just Midas. We also spoke that it's Nihi. It's already how it's applying itself to, to, to explain it to students. Shein Eich Lashpiel is Galas Bedavar Anivdal. It's how to we transmit and to reveal to something outside of yourself. In other words, it's already how to bring it into a muscle. One second, how to bring it to a muscle. The email. One second, one second. Okay, so one second. It's going back to it's been in general. The email. Yeshe calls a bet some amechin the chacham bina shalemaylam pchin the amechin the zokenal. So what, what what are you saying? So and even though. Compared, remember, to the emotions of Yisrael Zuta and Yaakov, it was Etzem Amechen. Because we said it was in the domain of intelligence. Intelligence that inclines toward this way, that way. Higher than the intelligence within the Amidus, that, that godless Amidus, that matures the emotions. Nevertheless, it's still only an expression, an extension, and a reflection alone. So in other words, so therefore it's Bina. In general it's Bina, the beginning of Ishtal is not really Chochme, not the core of Chochme. It's the outer Chochme, but even the outer Chochme is really connected to Bina. Kanoides, it's known, the Tfuna, Humokar HaMechen Deza. Tfuna, when we say Sral Sraba Tfuna, it's the begins, the root is the source of the intelligence of emotions. V'hainu b'chinis nihi de'ima, this is that's a chayd yisrael of imu which we learned before. Shenasim meichin lezo that become the meichin lezo. Remember, I said this earlier when we learned that Yaakov Yisrael Zuta a few chapters back. We learned what we learned. We learned in chapter Kufla Medal that Yaakov is just emotions re- relevant to your life, me chayecha. But what you have a little the tam halacha, a little reasoning. Then we learned how that you get involved in understanding God. But that matures your Midas. So it's not just about me, but it's still Midas. Then we learn there's the level of Meichin, which is the domain of Meichin, but it's the Midas Sheba Meichin. And remember I mentioned then, and that becomes the Meichin Sheba Midas. That's what he's saying now. So Tfuna is an interface between Meichin and Midas, where the domain of intelligence, as it has an inclination, will ultimately become the intelligence that will mature the emotion in the world of Midas. What he's trying to explain here that, that it's so sab and tfuna, he's lowering its level. It's not the core. It's still only the ovis. It's not mat and basically, is what he's leading to. And inside of nihi da'ima, you also have nihi da'aba. So that also is becoming a source for the next level called the midas. So they're like the lower level of meichen as meichen meets midas. You follow? See, you see how the switch is here? What's the difference between Abba and Ima in this case? Well, he said earlier, Abba and Ima is that uh, Abba Chachma would be the Samtus, that way you know that this is Chesed Gvor, even though you can't explain it, you just sense it. And Bina would be, Nahi of Bina would be, or Midas of Bina, where you can explain, you can explain that application. But it's always application. No matter how you twist it, what we learned before, it's application. It's not core, it's not just pure Concentrate. Remember, we spoke about concentrating an idea that you don't even realize that you have feelings. I got it. So now we're talking about how intelligence is informing. It. It's basically how intelligence is informing uh, applications. Okay. But it's intelligence. And it's already connecting to application all the way to the Midas. 
Now remember we said Nehi of Bina is a Kali for Nehi of, 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 of Abba. Yeah, it's basically Mashpia here, Makabal here. There's an interface. There's the highest levels of Makabal as it's rece- receiving, and there's the lowest levels of Mashpia as it communicates. But but when you talk about Atmos Hamaychen, then you're moving as it is a separate world. Uh-huh. Connecting to Eir and Sof, as he said. Etzmus. So Bina is really the channel of Yisrael Saba and Tfuna as it connects to the lower levels, essentially. We're moving up here now, and we understand from the above that Tfuna is Klitas Adover. That Tfuna, according to what we learned earlier, Tfuna is what? Klitas Adover. We said Klitas Alektzach. Klitas Adover is that it settles in. It's integrated. Through integrating the intelligence in the container of his mind. Remember, container. Being is the containers. Through that, he can bring it to something separate, to an uh, to an outside entity, to an alien, to a foreign entity. In this case, this is the midas shem it sees. In this case, the midas are like the student, because midas are already a separate entity from core intelligence, but because it's Nehi of Bina Tfuna. So it's able to, it's those handles that allow you to communicate it to the emotions. Which is, answers a fascinating question. We all learn that emotions are impulsive, intellect is reflective. They're two different worlds. How does a reflective mind speak to a bleeding heart, to an emotional heart? The answer is because there's number one midas in meichin itself, so they have a common language. There's a maturgam in here, there's a translator. Intelligence is not pure abstract ideas, it also can inform application. And midas is not just pure subjective impulses, it has, uh, it's, it's, it's receptive to uh, direction, to guidance. So yes, if you're untamed, pure core midas can be the lowest level, a person just does whatever he wants. Even Yaakov is primarily self-interest. Or like Chayecha. But Midas have receptivity, and they have with them, like he says, So it's, so it's able to communicate to each other. They both have, in other words, a dimension of the other, or else they wouldn't be able to communicate. Go explain, for example, to an animal, don't go hunting. An animal doesn't have that. It's, it's raw Midas. Its intelligence is only to know how to hunt. Don't tell me not to hunt. But in a human being, the midas have them an element that they're receptive and so on. Mm. So all this is the interface. You see, this is what, this is what the others yeah, did. They came to a world, a pagan world, and everyone did whatever they wanted. And the others said, no, let's discipline, let's learn, let's explain. They were able to make kalim of, for alakus, of a world that was driven by raw emotions. We learned earlier chapter 136, the Klita Sa'inyan, this is what we, that same line that we go back, that absorbing it, absorbing the idea, that was an integrating, absorbing the idea, is a container for Nehida Abba. So who in your Klayasaitis? Nehida Abba is the seeds, the Klayasaitis is the way, the wisdom of uh, the, the council that tells you how. Eich l'ashpia u'legalis. Oh, one second. Which is Klei Yisraelis? Nehi of Abba? Nehi of Abba? Nehi of Abba is in Klei Yisraelis. Eich l'ashpia. But the klita allows it to be a container to bring that out as we discussed. That part of the Yud. Part of the Hey, now. Okay, that part of the Yud. The Hey. That's why all this is encompassed in Bina. Shebchinis ha'ara levad. That's only a reflection that relates to the cosmic order. But the higher supernal that's the letter Yud. This is already the inner dimension of Bina. This is a Sagas This is a Silas Shabbat Silas. This is comprehending the Mahus. Just like in the inner dimension of Chachma. Primis Abina, in other words, has a similarity to Primis Achachma. They're Kalim to. The inner dimension of the kav that goes all the way to the primis of atzmos and sof. This is the inner unification of abba ve'ima, not the outer. Shemer b'ze atzmos ed and sof and this radiates the atzmos ed and sof. That's the higher dimension. So we literally have here levels, levels. It's literally spelling it out that all the levels 
that we've been talking about in the interface and the highest levels of Esos Rios and Nuzis play themselves out in the relationship between intellect and emotions in our lives. Kitsur. Interf- infinite amount of interfaces. <laughs> yeah, so be it. Kitsur. He says the Yisrael Sabbatun is the letter of Hey in the word Bina. In, in, the, in the name. Which is Shame Bina. Yeah, yeah, that's Bina. The Yisrael Sabbatun, that's Bina. Briya Shabbat Silas. That's Briya within Atzilas. For Chochma Atzilas Shabbat Silas. And Chochma is Atzilas Shabbat Silas. Because it's Mohus for Atzmas Akav. The core and essence of the kav. And yeah, it's clearly that that both the, that that same level. And we could say that he doesn't say that literally, but it's mashma. The outer kav is the reflection, and the inner kav is the atzmus. So he's actually saying it's exactly the same thing. The oydzeis was really explaining it, just adding a more dimension. Yeah. Val derech derech tzara. Because it's a chiddush, it doesn't say it specifically anywhere. He's saying it as a chiddush that it's a yeah, not in the pinim, but the, yeah, basically to explain that these two dimensions. Well, derech derech tzara, an example for this example when a teacher teaches derech tzara in a summarized way, so it's all there. It's all there. However, it's in a concentrated form. Oh, that's what he's saying. I thought I, I, it's deeper than I thought. Ah. The kitzur is uh, one second. Let me just see something. Yeah, that's very good. Same. Yeah, I know, but he, but I didn't pick up. Yeah, generally you say that the kalim are rooted higher than the eris, because the kalim are like in the rooted in the kavana. God wants a universe, a tachtainim. And Tachtenim is containers at the end of the day. It's a way it's created is through Eir. But Eir is not Tachten. Eir is a reflection of the core. Like he says in Tanya, that Eir, all the higher worlds, are like a Yerida compared to Atmos. Kalim right. is what God, Atmos, wants. So good. So according to the Shitta that Eir is Bligvul, it's very clear. Eir reflects God's wishes. It reveals. It's a very high level. It's like Torah. But Mitzvahs. Well, Kalim is the higher power. But according to the opinion that also air has in its tense, also has in its structure, in a subtle way, so he's saying the primi sakav has in it also the the code of the at uh, the etzim. That's what he's saying here. Yeah. So just like the rishima, that I didn't. I mean, I maybe I, maybe I said. So if if. You could say that the Kav doesn't have the core like the Rishima has. It only has the reflection reflections. That's the outer Kav. But the inner dimension of the Kav has an element of Atmos in it. Of, of the core. Huh? Okay, fine. But, but it's more Befetish here. That's all. At that point, so. we still, it, it, it sort of takes away the need for the Rishima. So. No, it doesn't take away the need. It just creates more symbiosis. And it creates more integration. That's all it does. Because it's still air. Kav is still air. At the end of the day, it's still air. It just, showing, it just makes the relationship closer. Let's put it this way, the neshama and guf, like tchis amesim, will still be a neshama and a guf. The guf is containers, neshama is air. Okay. I may have said, okay, umeir beprimis ha-chochme, and this level radiates in the inner dimension of chochme, l'chein nikra teir mashal kadmeini, that's why teir is called the mashal, the primor- primordial mashal, the mashal for the, for the kadmen, parse she'etzim is alam b'zeh, it's like the, it's, it's, it's not tzimtzum, it's parse. It's a curtain where the core, the essence, is concealed in it like a mushal, a nimshal in a mushal. The gam, the bechachm, that's the sweetest agnus, is meir b'chinis aprimis v'atmus. And also, also, it's an also, that in the chachm of the ten, the wisdom in the ten hidden spheres radiates the inner and the core of, 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 the, of the energy. But simsim de chachm ha'glu yihirak miyut. Well, he's adding things here that are not in the prim. Now he's saying that simsim of chachm ha'gluya is only a diminished tzimtzum. Because remember, he says, what's the point of the tzimtzum? is to make a distinct entity. But it's only miyut. Not siluk. He speaks about that in the chapter 20. Yeah. Why is it miyut? It's siluk, a miyut. Because it's the same base. It's just making it distinct. Ah, so we have here three levels. Tzimtzum b'derech siluk is what allows the containers to be. Tzimtzum b'derech miyut allows a distinct 
Chochmet to emerge. And Parsa is what allows it just to be, it carries the energy like a Moshla and a Nimshla. So Parsa and Tzimtzum B'derach Mirit are very similar actually. I have to think about that. Avobina Ha'ara HaShayach Lishtalshlus. Bina, on the other hand, is already a reflection that's relationship to structure of existence. That's the other side of the interface. That's why it's called living God. Because Chaim is external. Because it's already an inclination, a leaning toward an application. That's the level of Bina. It's going toward Midas, toward the emotions. And Abi Lam, the higher Abi Law is the premius of Chachma Bina and the premius of Bina, that's already the comprehension of the core. Let me just say one thing here before. So he added this mute, it's very interesting here. So we have, you remember, we talked about Yeshma'in and Gilead Helam of Atsilas. So we said, first we say the Gilead Helam is only for the Ur, not the Kale. Then we say even the Ur. I'm saying the opposite. The kelim, okay. The air is the kelim is yashmain and the air is gilei hell. I mean, the air is there's a place beyond. There's a place that it gets close to. Okay. Bottom line is that there's a relationship with chachma of the ten hidden spheres, but nevertheless there is a diminishment. And there's a concealment as well that makes it concealed. So let me just see one thing. Tzimtzum. To go back and see, but it looks like there's a symptom. Okay, we'll stop here. We did chapter, the end of chapter, we finished chapter 137, pages 265 through 267.